Hey there, Pokemon Masters and Quirk Enthusiasts. Welcome back to another electrifying episode of our What If series. I'm Kronos, and today, we're diving into a mind-bending scenario that'll have you on the edge of your seat. Ever wondered what would happen if our favorite green-haired hero, Deku, got his hands on Pokemon alongside one for all? Well, buckle up, because we're about to embark on an adventure like no other. But before we jump into the action, I gotta give a massive shout out to the creative genius behind this concept, none other than Zayden Stormvoid. Thanks for keeping our imaginations running wild. So, grab your poke balls, heroes, and let's hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell because you won't want to miss a single moment of this epic journey. Now, let's dive right in. Chapter 1 Clouds pass over the bright blue sky, the kind where you think of happy times to spend with your friends and family. The kind where nothing could go wrong. For one person in particular, that wasn't really the case. And if you were to see the scene in person that he was in, you probably wouldn't think so too. A boy no older than four, with messy dark green hair, freckles that shaped like diamonds on both his cheeks, and wearing a simple light blue shirt, green shorts, and crimson red shoes, a sweet, innocent-looking kid but with a face of fear and tears in his eyes and whimpering. What was he so scared of? A small group of three kids and their Pokemon. One a pudgy kid with crimson wings on his back and a Spearow flying beside him, another with a toothy, sinister smile with a purple cap and super long, extending fingers and a tangela next to him, and the final one the leader of this group, a crimson-eyed, spiky, ash-blonde-haired boy whose hands popped with tiny explosions alongside a Cyndaquil whose flames sparked out ready to strike. The reason he stood before them? Behind him was another kid, crying and bruised holding his heavily injured Rattata. The three kids were hurting him. They hurt his Rattata. And the boy couldn't stand by and watch it happen and do nothing. Why are you being so mean? The boy said, fear and innocence in his voice. You are making him cry, Kakin. You've hurt his Rattata too far. The boy crouched down slightly and raised his fists. If you keep on hurting the Mala, I'll stop you myself. The three kids looked at the boy in silence. But a second later, their smiles returned with sinister amusement. The kid with the ash blonde hair, Kakin as he was called, smirked and said, You want to pretend to be a hero? He slammed his right fist into his left palm and tiny, yet threatening explosion occurring that puffed out sparks of fire and smoke. Kakin Cyndaquil took note and crouched down, its flames rising threateningly too. You don't stand a chance without a quirk and such a weak Pokemon, Kakin said. He looked at the boy with eyes closed yet let out a smile that drove pure fear into the boy's heart. He said one more word, a word that to the boy felt like he was being branded. Deku! The boy called Deku stepped back in fear. But as he felt like he was going to run away, the boy felt a head of fur touch his leg. The boy looked down to find his own Pokemon, standing beside him and rubbing his head on his leg in a comforting nudge. The Pokemon was small, covered in brown fur, with a large collar of light brown fur, stood on four small legs, had large brown ears, and had a large busy brown tail with a patch of light brown fur, in the shape of an arrow, on the tip of its tail. The Pokemon was known as an Eevee. More importantly, it was the boy's Eevee. The Pokemon nudged his leg and despite the fear evident in his eyes, Eve gave him a bright smile and a fire in its eyes that drowned the fear. Deku was still in shock but smiled as well. His eyes shone again with strength through the tears and raised his fists again in defense fueled by his Pokemon's encouragement. As the bullies and their Pokemon rushed towards the duo, Deku and Eevee stood tall and ready. A short while later, the three bullies and their Pokemon were gone, the injured boy and his Rattata knelt down and cried, and the boy called Deku and his Eevee, side by side, were on the floor, covered in bruises and scorch marks. The boy looked towards his Eevee, his partner, his fur tattered and scorched, its eyes closed and groaning in pain. His eyes filled with tears once again at what, he believed, was his fault. He fought knowing he would be beaten. He knew he directed the boy's attacks on him and away from the kid and his Rattata, but at what cost? He fought knowing Evie would be hurt. Yet he and Evie still did it. The boy turned his tired eyes to the sky above, the sun shining bright, the clouds rolling by and a swarm of Pidgeys flying high above. The view made him more tired and more sad. Before he could rest his eyes and fall into unconsciousness, the boy thought to himself. Asked to himself the question he always asked since that faithful day. I is he alright? Am I am I just pee pretending? 
Am I really so useless? Can I be a hero, too? Izuka Midoriya Origins Izuka POV That was me. I'm Izuka Midoriya and I learned something that day. A sad and hard truth. All men are not created equal. All men are not treated equal either. I learned that some people have more power than others. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you my story. My journey. The world I live in is a weird one. Weird but amazing. Ever since mankind had walked the earth, ever since we grew as a species, populated the planet, traveled the land, sea, and skies, and built civilizations, we weren't alone. We were joined into this world by the wondrous creatures that we called Pokemon. They come in many shapes, sizes, and what mankind took most notice of, power. They could perform feats unlike anything man could do. Some could fly high into skies, some could breathe fire and control the elements, some possess strength enough to smash a boulder into pieces. Some are even revered as deities and forces of nature and power. But what made them truly special, and what made us special too, was the bond that we shared with them. As long as mankind has lived, mankind and Pokemon have stood side by side, using their talents and skills to grow smarter, stronger, and more amazing. We play with them, we study them, we capture them and fight other Pokemon from other trainers for sport and competition. It looks better than it sounds. Many of these Pokemon relate to each other through not just looks, but also their power and types. Over 18 different classifying types. Fire, water, nature, lightning, and on and on. Each Pokemon had one or two typings and some could even gain and change them over time. Pokemon could also change in appearance and species as they grow stronger through evolution. Some could also change by other means like friendship or special stones. Each species, size, and shape of Pokemon was as unique as the snowflakes of a snowy winter day. But not all are treated equally as well. Some are viewed as powerful, important, special. Some are overlooked and deemed useless. A sentiment that I can relate. A sentiment that many in fact share after the appearance of quirks. The first incident was in Quick Quick, China. An extraordinary child was born who radiated light, like an ampharos. After that, reports of people with superpowers popped up across the globe. No one knew what was causing these strange phenomena. Chaos spread, society started to collapse, and the line that separated humans and Pokemon became thinner and blurred. But as time went on, and these superpower individuals became more common, our world changed and went through its own evolution. These superpowers became known as quirks and many to this day are still researching quirks and their origins. Many took note that these quirks resembled the types of Pokemon and began classifying quirks and types like Pokemon. And whilst quirks became the norm, Pokemon continued as always as an integral part of life. The supernatural became normal. Dreams a reality. Our mysterious, wondrous world became a greater superhuman society with about 80% of the population possessing some uncanny ability. But just like most things of our world, there are always those who use their gifts and talents in their own self-interest. For one reason or another, some superhuman individuals use their quirks for dark and malicious reasons, these villains use their quirks and Pokemon for terrible misdeeds and law enforcement, even with their own Pokemon, struggled against their power. But as darkness always rises, the light rises to drive it back. As cities swirled with chaos and confusion, Others took a stand and fought against these villains in the service and protection of others. A new profession dominated our collective consciousness. It was a golden age of heroes. These defenders of the peace and people worked to protect civilians from disasters, both man-made and natural. Our streets looked like scenes from comic books. They worked tirelessly to defend those who couldn't help themselves. Whilst governments around the globe struggled to rework laws with quirks in mind, and criminal activity rising with villains who abuse their powers for evil, these courageous people performed acts of heroism to keep our city safe. And with the aid of their Pokemon and overwhelming public support, they found a place in our new society. Those who were more popular and did the best were paid the most and got all the fame and glory, whilst others weren't and struggled against matters of popularity and effectiveness. But despite all their shortcomings and issues, what was important was their mission, their duty, to protect those who can't protect themselves. They were seen as our greatest champions of peace and hope. And that was what I wanted to be. No matter what. No matter what. Ten years later. 
Now I'm fourteen years old, and today I was having quite possibly the worst day of my life. Today was just like any other day. On my way to school, I witnessed a villain with some kind of gigantification quirk, along with an abnormally large gyridos, tearing apart a subway route after stealing a purse and getting caught. During which, nearby heroes came to the rescue, like death arms and backdraft. New up-and-coming heroes like Kumi Woods and Empty Lady also made their debut and apprehended the criminal. I, of course, wrote all of what I saw of their quirks, Pokemon, and potential on my hero journal, my thirteenth one. A nice old man there on the scene, with these star-shaped protrusions coming out of his head, called me out for being a famba and asked if I wanted to be a hero. I smiled and said yes and he cheered me on to continue my dreams. I would have been more touched, but I knew it was just the nice words of a random old man. A random old man who didn't know who I was and didn't know anything about me or my quirk or lack thereof. Afterwards, whatever joy I had that day turned to ash by the reality of another school day of Aldera Junior High, and what I have come to expect every day now. Today, our teacher talked to us about our future endeavors and career paths, like a police officer or a Pokemon professor or researcher, but he, along with everyone else, knew that everybody wanted to become heroes. Even if most of their quirks weren't anything that could be seen as useful or flashy. I mean as optimistic as I am, what kind of hero would be effective if their quirk was something like having a super long neck or nose? Then again I don't exactly have anything to say for that matter. That is when my childhood friend slash ten year long bully, Katsuki Bakugo or as I call him Kaken, made a pompous show of himself, proclaiming that he was better than everyone else, that he would get into UA High, the best hero school in the country, some even say the world, and that he would be more popular than All Might himself. He claimed, and I quote, that he would be the richest and most popular hero of all time. Internally, I frowned at Kaken's choice of words. Heroes shouldn't be about fame or money, idiot. I thought. Why can't you see past that ego of yours for once? Then my teacher decided to end Kaken's little show by making my day turn to hell. He outed that I wanted to go to UA too. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop the others from laughing at me especially Kaken who exploded my desk and told me all I was was a quirkless wannabe. Useless, defenseless, Deku. What he did after class was the final straw, what made me realize that the best friend I had when I was four died. Killed by his own ego. He destroyed my hero journal, all my hard work and tossed it out the window like garbage. And finally said, Hey, if you really want to be a hero so badly, there might be a way. Just pray that you will be born lucky in your next life and take a swan dive of the roof of the building. Those words echoed in my head as I looked out the window he threw my journal. Echoed in my head as I went out to grab my notebook, now turned into Magikarp food. My mind reeled back to all the words he called me, all the abuse and torment, all the pain he put me through. All the pain the universe itself brought onto me from the moment I was born. Useless Izuku. You can't do anything right. You are nothing but a worthless cater pie. Just a bug that always gets in my way. Worthless Deku. Sorry kid, it's not gonna happen. I'm sorry Izuku. Take a swan dive off the roof of the building. My mind kept replaying the words and events over and over again. Right at the moment I stood on the school rooftop. I looked down below and wondered if he was right. He was always right. That's what my life has seemingly said. From the day he got his quirk to the day I found out I had no quirk that I was quirkless. Remember when I said that 80% of the population have quirks? I'm one of the unlucky few that land in the 20% of people who don't. I have no quirk. Quirkless. A simple nine-letter word that, to me, was the same as saying useless. I looked at the ground below me and as I planted my foot on the railing, two voices behind me called out to me. E.V. Pika Pie. They yelled. I looked behind me to find my lifelong partner and companion and my semi-companion right next to me and looking me with those dark brown and black eyes that oozed happiness and comfort. I remember having Evie ever since I could remember. I remember me and Evie replaying hero fantasies with me and Evie wielding large, courageous smiles. Remember those times where Katshai mean Katsuki and I would play around in the forest and park, playing heroes and fighting bad guys side by side as partners, or as Katsuki would view me as a sidekick. I would chuckle at Evie playing around with Kak and Cyndaquil. Then as Katsuki got his quirk and I got nothing, things changed. 
Katsuki viewed me as useless and worthless before I got my quirk. Now he saw me as having as much worth as a Magikarp that can't evolve. Our play dates turned to beat down sessions as he would use me and Eevee for target practice for both him and Cyndaquil. Made me out to be the villain of his story. It got worse when I said I was going to be a hero, regardless of having no quirk, and even worse when Cyndaquil evolved into Kalava and Eevee never did. But I didn't want Eevee to evolve, not unless he wanted to and I knew he never did and I didn't either. Katsuki unleashed enough explosions onto me that I had to hide my shoulders and chest from my mom for days when I told him that. For ten years, Katsuki Bakudu bullied me over and over and over again. All the while calling me a worthless piece of grubbish trash. A useless cater pie. Gave me the name Deku, which in the proper kanji translated to useless, worthless. Someone that can't do anything. For a time, I believed him. It wasn't hard to believe. When your best friend proclaims you are useless, bullies and beats you up for ten years straight, when no fellow kid or teacher helps or calls Bakugo out and even your own mother doesn't believe you can be a hero. It was enough to drive someone off the edge. EV, however, was different. He was always there, smiling and comforting me when things got bad, always cheered me up and remembered to smile through the pain, to always smile no matter how hard things get, just like my all-time favorite hero and idol, All Might, the number one hero the symbol of peace, and a hero that saves everyone with a smile on his face. But as much as All Might was my idol and pillar of support for my dream, Evie was the one that was always there, always in my life. Well, him and Pikachu. Pikachu was another constant companion of mine, but he wasn't technically, well, mine. I'm pretty sure Pikachu wasn't anybody's Pokemon, a wild Pokemon. Pikachu was also different from all the others that I had ever seen. He had a ruffle of fur on his ear that seemed unique, and, as I have seen many times, was faster and more powerful than any Pikachu I had ever seen. I remembered fondly one day where me and Evie were trapped in the woods by a big storm and were attacked by a flock of wild Spearows. Then Pikachu came out of nowhere and unleashed the biggest blast of lightning I had ever seen, and scattered the Pokémon away. Ever since, he has been my unofficial second Pokémon, and the first Pokémon I will try to catch when I'm of the legal age to catch wild Pokemon, of fifteen. Katsuki didn't like that either. Thought that worthless Deku shouldn't have such a powerful Pokemon, and tried catching it himself with a poke ball, something that he shouldn't have had at that age. It always rejected and fled from him, and anybody else who tried, which in turn made Katsuki release his rage onto the closest thing he could find, my gut. Even when other kids used their own fast Pokemon or speed-boosting quirks, it always ran too fast. I was the only one that ever managed to get close and play with it, which in turn made others jealous and joined Bakudu's bully Deku Club. Regardless, Pikachu became fast friends with me and Eevee. But as time moved on, I always found myself curious about Pikachu's tail, more specifically, a weird mark, barely visible and covered in fur. But I soon gave up trying to find out what it was, both because Pikachu refused to show me and would always zap me when I tried. I didn't mind the shocks and saw them as playful punches something that I knew Pikachu appreciated. I looked at the two and smiled, the dark thoughts and words fading away. I knelt down to them and said, Thanks guys. For always being there when I needed it. Even if I'm just a worthless kid who can't do anything. Pikachu responded to that with a tiny thunderbolt. I laid there on the ground and twitched at the electricity flowing through my body. I guess I deserve that. I said, Eevee rubbed my head with his own and Pikachu let out playful tiny jabs at my sides that tickled. What would I do without you guys? I said. After that, me and the two Pokemon decided to head out back to my home, maybe dust off or hide the scorch marks on my shoulder where Katsuki threatened me with his quirk. As much as I wanted to say something about Katsuki's behavior, I knew it would be pointless. From an early age, Katsuki was praised for his powerful quirk, Explosion and said that he was going to be a great hero. I knew that if I said anything to anyone, it would just be seen as the petty, bitter words of a jealous, quirkless loser trying to ruin his chances. I knew that if I told the school they either do nothing, report nothing, ignore me, and or find a way to get me written up. If I told my mom about it, she would only worry, and she has enough to worry about. Or maybe the reason I never called him out was because I didn't want to lose him. Crazy? Yes. Insane? Probably. But I always held on to this hope that he would feel remorse, 
that he would turn back into my best friend again. My symbol of victory. But after that last comment, I knew that it was all pointless. I also realized that all the times Bakugi used his quirk on me, where they would leave possible scorch marks and burns, were always in places I could hide. Anything else like a punch to the face could be chalked up to self-made injuries or accidents. I realized that his attacks weren't just reckless aggression, they were calculated, intended. What's the point in being friends with someone like that? That idiot. I thought. You can't tell people to kill themselves. What if I actually jumped? What would he do then? Stupid jerk. We walked around until we arrived at an underpass tunnel. I stopped and remembered back to that fateful day and the promise I made to myself. No, don't get distracted by him. You have spent your whole life following his shadow and got nothing but pain and trauma. I won't let him win by giving up or listening to him. I don't care what anyone says. Evie and Pikachu believe in me and that is all I need. I will become a hero. The kind that saves people and Pokemon with a smile on his face. Just like him. I looked to the sky before I entered the tunnel and shouted. I won't give up. I'll become a hero. And with the two of you by my side, we will save others. EVV. P.I. Pikachu. The two cried out, Evie jumping up and down and smiling brightly and Pikachu raising his paw high. I tried to imitate All Might's laugh, bringing my spirits high, until I felt a cold shiver down my spine at the sounds of a weird sloshing sound behind me. Fearfully, I turned around slowly and became paralyzed with fear. Standing before me was a mass of purple and green sludge, large enough that it blocked out the light of the tunnel I came from. I would have thought it was a mook if not for the crazed white yellow eyes and a sinister wide smile on his face filled with razor-sharp teeth. This wasn't a mook or any Pokemon. It was... A villain? I shouted in fear and panic. The sludge villain looked at me with his crazed eyes, his sinister smile growing wider and more malevolent. He looked at me like I was some kind of prize that he won. I could tell that Pikachu and Eevee took a fighting stance but I was too frozen in fear that I couldn't move. Then the sludge villain spoke saying, Hey kid, you'll make a perfect skin suit for me to hide in. A second later, he flew straight at me like a bullet. I tried to run away but before I could even take a step, the mass of dark sludge crashed onto me and surrounded me. I heard Pikachu and Eevee cry out in pain as they were knocked back to sides of the tunnel. I tried to cry out for help but that proved to be a mistake. The sludge villain jammed a tentacle of sludge into my mouth, shutting me up. I tried to yell out more for help but it came out in useless muffles. I struggled and kicked, trying to break free. The sludge villain spoke. Don't worry I'm just taking over your body. It'll be easier for both of us if you don't fight back. It'll only hurt for a minute. You'll feel better soon. I can't breathe. I thought fearfully. I tried to grab him and pull him off, but my fingers just passed through him. The sludge villain said. Grab all you want. My entire body is made of fluid. I continued to struggle and looked frantically for Evie and Pikachu. Out of the corner of my eyes I saw Pikachu and Evie looking at me scared and then angry with frustration in their eyes. I knew Pikachu was more frustrated because he couldn't zap the villain off without hurting me too. Pikachu then rushed forward, a trail of white tail following him. He was using quick attack. He jumped into the air and his tail glowed with a metal sheen, as evident of using iron tail. Pikachu's tail flew past the villain's fluid body. The sludge villain shot out hands made of sludge and grabbed Pikachu. He then hurled and smashed Pikachu against the walls of the tunnel repeatedly, and finally onto the ground in front of me. Pikachu looked heavily bruised and looked ready to faint at the number of hard hits. I tried calling out Pikachu's name, but it too was muffled. I then heard Evie's cries and saw him charging as well. No Evie Don. T. I tried to say through my muffled mouth. Evie leaped into the air while the sludge villain was distracted and, with its tail glowing with the move slam, struck the villain in the eye. The sludge villain howled in pain and momentarily was distracted. Evie tried to pull me out of him afterwards but was instead struck by the sludge villain's wildly, flailing hand. Evie crashed onto the wall of the tunnel and slumped there, its eyes heavy and in pain. The sludge villain said, God damn it! Cheat shot you little shit! Ugh. No matter. I got to hurry. I didn't know that he was in the city. I got to get out of here fast before he tracks me down. But maybe before I leave, 
I can use your own body to strangle your dear little Pokemon. I continued to struggle but soon my limbs became more weak, my struggling slowed, and my eyes got heavier. Body getting weak, I thought. I think I'm dying. The sludge villain looked to me as he continued to take over me. He said, Thanks for the help. You're a real hero to me, kid. No way. I thought as I tearfully looked at my charred hero journal open. This can't be the end. I looked at my design for my hero costume, the smiling hero I wanted to be. My vision became blurred and my eyes started to droop. Somebody, help. As I closed my eyes, the last of my will to survive fading, I heard the sounds of sewer grate fly open, a hard thud, the villain gasp in shock and fear, and a deep voice call out. Have no fear. You are safe. Now that I am here. My eyes opened slightly, the voice giving me the will to fight further. I struggled again as the sludge villain attacked the owner of the voice. I heard a crash of rubble, the sound of a foot sliding on the ground, and a massive gust of wind blast around me. Texas smash! The gust of wind enveloped around me as the sludge villain blew apart into pieces. I felt free. I could breathe again. My eyes, heavy and tired, focused on my rescuer. I saw a shining light, a large man with two large hair strands pointed, a godly muscled physique, and a brightening, large smile on his face. As everything went dark, I thought aloud I is that, a all, me dash. I awoke to the sensation of someone lightly clapping my left cheek, and the feeling of a familiar furry head and paw nuzzle and tap me. I heard the deep voice speak again. Hey! Wake up! Hey! As my eyes opened to the bright sky above, Evie and Pikachu cried out in glee and began hugging me. I chuckled, my voice raspy, before coughing and breathing heavily. My vision cleared as I saw Evie and Pikachu smiling with tiny tears in their eyes. I smiled warmly at them and gave them a look of reassurance. Thought we lost you there. The voice spoke again. I turned my head towards its owner, and the whole world seemed to freeze. It was him. Standing there, slightly bowed, was the greatest hero the world had ever seen. The world's symbol of peace. My hero. All Might. All Might was just as he looked like my figurines and posters, minus the hero outfit. He had golden blonde hair, most slicked back with two tufts of hair sticking up, his face and body chiseled like a marble statue, dark shadows covering his eyes. His clothes consisted of a plain white shirt that strained against his muscles and a pair of dark moss green pants, and wore a big smile on his face. I gaped and probably looked like an idiot, but who wouldn't if they were face to face with the greatest hero in the world and idol who saved them? I yelped loudly and crawled back a few feet away. All Might, always smiling, said, Well, looks like you're moving around all right. He raised his right hand with palm out and continued. Sorry about that back there. Didn't mean for you to get caught up in my justicing. Usually I pay more attention to keeping bystanders safe but it turns out that this city's sewer system is pretty difficult to navigate. Ha ha. I stuttered, blushing slightly, and gaped at the sight of my idol, barely paying attention to what he was saying. I could hear Pikachu snickering beside me and Evie trying hard not to do the same but was cracking. All Might continued saying, Anyway, you were a big help. Thank you. Thanks to you distracting the him, I've captured the evildoer. All Might posed and held out two large torrent soda bottles his left arm out forward. In the bottles there were the same purple and dark green sludge of the sludge villain. I could even see the villain's yellow eyeballs in the left bottle, his eyes having an X on them, meaning he was knocked out. But that wasn't what I was paying attention. The most amazing hero of the entire world. I thought. All might. The real thing. In the flesh. Right in front of me. He looks so much cooler in person. I snapped out of my fanboy stupor and realized something I had to do. Holy crap! I have to get an autograph. I know I have a pen around here somewhere. I tapped all around me, looking for a pen. I whipped my head to my notebook laying on the ground next to us. I rushed to grab it like a missile and shouted, Please sign my notebook. I opened it to find his signature already in it. Aowug! I screamed. He already did! I stood up straight and bowed to him repeatedly that I looked like a green blur. Ha, thank you so much. These will be from Lahirlam, a family tree of surpassy down trough generations. Also thank you for saving GIVN Pikachu as well. I mumblingly yelled out. 
E.V., Pikachu, and All Might sweat dropped at my antics, but All Might kindly gave me a thumbs up. All Might said, You're welcome. I also healed up your Pokemon using some spare potions I had. Don't trouble yourself with paying me back. Consider it as my apology for putting the three of you in danger. Plus I couldn't let these two little bundles of fur and cuteness all hurt and full of boo-boos. Me and said two bundles of fur deadpan at just hearing the number one pro hero and symbol of peace talk like a mother would talk to a baby. He then put the bottles full of the knocked out sludge villain in his pant pockets and said, Well, I got to get this guy to the police so they can take care of him. He turned from me, looked back and gave me a friendly hand wave. Stay out of trouble. See you around. I froze momentarily and asked, Double you wait you're leaving? Already? All Might crouched down and bent his knees up and down, stretching his legs. He said in response, Pro heroes are constantly fighting time, as well as enemies. I froze and my nervous smile dropped into a disappointed frown. He can't leave yet. I thought as he continued stretching. There are still so many questions I want to ask him. One question in particular. He crouched down low and said, Now stand back. I'm taking off. A second later, All Might jumped high into the air like a rocket. Thanks for your continued support. He left. But not without something tagging along. Or rather someone. Huh. All Might looked down and despite his constant smiling face, looked shocked and asked, Wait, what are you doing? The someone tagging along was me. As All Might seemed to soar through the air, I clung to his leg, screaming my already injured lungs off, the wind pushing back my face, and I could tell that Evie and Pikachu also clung onto me, the two crying out and shaking as the wind blew past their fur. All Might wiggled around and tried pulling me off of him, oblivious of our mid-flight surroundings. He yelled out, Kay, let go! I love my fans, but this is too much. Too much being having them wrap around me like an Eakins. I yelled out, both in fear of falling and to yell through the roaring winds, in response. And away! We're flying! If I let go now I'll die! All Might immediately ceased his struggling and blankly said, Oh, that's a good point. I yelled out again. I just have a lot of things to ask you, personally. You are my all-time favorite hero. Please! Please! Okay. Okay. All Might yelled back. I get it. Just keep your eyes and mouth shut and don't let go. Same goes for you two little balls of sunshine. I would have facepalmed at that last comment if I wasn't scared of me and the two balls of sunshine falling to our deaths. I closed my eyes and mouth and hanged on to dear life. As we sailed through the air and the roar of the wind blew through my ears, I could faintly hear all my coughing loudly. We landed on the roof of a building in downtown. I shook like I was attacked by an ice-type using blizzard, my hair standing on ends and a blank look in my eyes. I saw my life flash before my eyes. I said trembling. I looked to see Evie and Pikachu also shaking like a pair of scared vimpods, their hairs standing up and the same look of blank terror in their eyes. All Might stood straight and said, Not a very good move, especially in putting your Pokemon in danger as well. Very irresponsible, he sighed and said. Bang on the door and someone will let you in. Now I have to go. See you on the flip side. In realization of his words, I shook my head, fixed my hair, and yelled. Wait, not yet. One second. All Might yelled back with irritation in his voice. And oh, I don't have any time. I yelled out loud with all I had. I have to know. The memories came rushing onto me again. Sorry kid, it's not going to happen. I'm sorry, Izuku. I wish things were different. Defenseless Izuku. The school is already crepey. Do you really want to embarrass it by failing so hard? I looked to the ground before me, the faces of my mother crying. Katsuki attacking me. The ground below the rooftop. Evie and Pikachu with smiles on their faces. Pikachu saving me and Evie. Evie with bruises still looking at me with a pained smile. Sometimes I do feel like a failure. I thought. That there is no hope for me. That all my dreams were just that dreams. That I'm not worthy to have Pikachu as a friend. Or Evie as a partner. But even so, I'm not going to give up. Ever. I gathered up all my courage, all the pain, suffering, trauma, and feeling my heart. I gathered it all up and asked. 
Is it possible to become a hero even if I don't have a quirk? All Might stopped in his tracks. I pushed forward, venting all the pain out, desperate for an answer, desperate for what the truth I wanted to hear. The truth I wanted him, of all people, to say. I'm a normal kid, without any powers. All I have is EV and Pikachu. Everyone told me it's impossible, but I have to know. I have to know from you. Can I ever hope to be someone like you? Can I be a hero too? Chapter 2 Can I be a hero? Third POV Ten years ago In a small apartment building, in Musitifa City, the sounds of excitement and child laughter could be heard. Izuka Midoriya ran around the house, a Silver Age All Might figurine in his hand, his arms out wide, pretending he had a flight-based quirk and was soaring through the air. He made vroom-like sounds, his messy dark green hair blowing against the fast movement and the fans that set up around the living room. He yelled out, making his voice deeper like All Might. Stop there, evildoer! Your villainy will not stand! I am a hero and I will protect the lives of people and Pokemon from your evil ways! His villain he was chasing was his EV, smaller and more young, jumping out and trying to run away from his companion. Eevee leaped and ran around, on, and over the furniture, all the while calling out its name, with glee and laughter in its voice. Eevee wore a dark purple cape, strung around his neck and flapped as he ran. His eyes were masked by a red, sinister design mask. Eevee! Eevee! Eevee called out, his voice trying to mimic a humorous, villainous laugh. Izuka thought of a plan to catch the evildoer and stopped in his tracks. He then sprinted the opposite direction, launched down onto the floor and performed a roll, clumsily, and hid behind the sofa, his appearance hidden from the gleeful, unaware Pokemon. Izuka peered over the sofa to see Eevee heading his way from the left. The young for year old boy smiled brightly and heroic. He crouched, timed Eevee's heading and speed, and launched himself. As Eevee appeared and looked to his left, the evolution Pokemon was caught off guard and tackled by the small boy. Izuka grabbed onto Eevee, its small, furry body in his embrace, and rolled onto the floor. They stopped with Eevee in Izuka's hands, held high in front of him. Izuka laughed heroically. Ha ha! I caught you, evildoer! Your villainous ways end here! Because I am here! Eevee's response was licking his face in endearment. Izuka giggled and laughed. Eevee! Izuka shouted gleefully and playfully annoyed. You can't do that, you silly fur ball! Villains don't lick the heroes when they are caught. That's gross and weird. Eevee shook off his mask and Izuka removed his cape. Izuka beamed, face full of innocence and happiness, and said to his partner, Eevee, the time is almost here. Our visit to the doctor. The day we find out what my quirk is going to be. Eevee! Eevee shouted out in glee. Izuka got up from the ground, stood, and posed dramatically a clenched fist at his side and his all-might figure raised high. Eevee mimicked Izuka as best he could, sitting on the ground with a paw raised into the air. The two wore bright smiles on their faces. Izuka said, When I get my quirk, I will train hard and make it as strong as possible. We will train together, you will learn powerful moves, and I will do the same. We will go to UA High, the best hero school in the world, the same school All Might went to, and we will become heroes too. E.V., the Pokemon shouted with conviction. Suddenly, Izuka heard his mother, Inko Midoriya, calling out to him. Izuka and E.V. turned to his mother peering out from the corner. She said, It's computer time. One hour of using the computer, remember? Izuka Midoriya definitely took after his mother. Her long hair, some of it wrapped in a bun while the rest flowed to her shoulders, took the same color as Izuka's. Her eyes held an emerald color and had pale white skin. She was a beautiful mother, with a thin and hourglass figure. She wore a bright pink sweater over a white dress shirt, a pair of white sandals on her feet, a short blue skirt, and wore a cream-colored apron over the rest. Izuka brightened up and said, Why eight? Come on, Evie, it's video time! Izuka and Evie ran towards the computer room, his mother following. Izuka practically launched himself into the chair and as he did pleaded out to his mom, Come on, mom! Play the video! Faster! Faster! Mrs. Midoriya chuckled and said, All right, all right, calm down, my little hero. She activated the computer and searched up the said video. Inko said, 
Jeez, I think you added 10,000 views to this video yourself, Izuku. I don't know why you like this video so much, I think it's scary. Izuku didn't look affected by his mother's soft, kind words, holding his all might figure in his hands tightly, and rocking head up and down with a look of innocent and wild excitement in his eyes. Evie, likewise, sat next to Deca by the arms of the chair, rocking his own head sideways. As the video started up, Izuku and Evie leaned in, his face gaining a tiny red blush of excitement, and practically screamed internally with energy. The video Izuku was seeing, his most favorite one, was an old one. Disaster footage from a long time ago. The video played out as the shot showed a smoking, flaming surrounding. Rubble and debris everywhere. Roaring fires erupted all around, dark plumes of smoke rose into the air, clouding the night sky, and the terrified screams of the people there filled the night with the sounds of falling rubble and roaring fires. The video panned out towards a group of civilians and their Pokémon, victims of the disaster, Izuka could count about over 100. They ranged from men, women, and even children, their clothes covered in ash and soot, some even looked injured with bruises, cuts, and blood. The video panned to a guy among the crowd next to the man filming the event. He had simple white shirt, covered in dirt and rubble, his dark hair messy, and some tiny splatters of blood on his shoulder. He looked to the camera and said with panic in his voice and fear on his face, Who is he? The man spoke. The guy has already saved over a hundred people, at least, and it hasn't even been ten minutes. This is, this is crazy. I can't believe it. The event was truly terrible and scary. But the reason why Izuka loved this video was because it was the debut of the greatest hero the world had ever seen. The video switched towards a ruined tur bus. A large figure started to appear over the bus. Izuku, even after seeing it so many times, heaved and breathed with excitement, his open smile growing wider, his shining eyes growing brighter. The figure climbed up the bus slowly, laughing triumphantly. Ha ha! Ha ha! The figure stood tall with a physique to put a mock amp to shame, two tufts of yellow hair sprung up like the ears of a cinderace, his costume blue, white and red, with yellow gloves, belt, and boots with yellow feather designs sticking out. The red and white formed AV on his chest, similar to the shining smile on his chiseled face. On his back, and in his arms held about dozen or more injured civilians. A second later, a flash of red and white appeared as cinderace, one of the hero's most popular and powerful Pokémon, stood side by side with his hero partner, several small Pokémon lifted onto his right shoulder and carrying more on his left. Look! He's got more! The man shouted out. Izuku's eyes shined and breathed cutely and full of energy and hope. The whole world around him seemed to fade to white as he watched the video and the godly man that stood there. As the figure placed out a foot above the bus, All Might shouted out to the people. Fear not, citizens! Hope has arrived! Izuka's gleaming eyes shone upon the hero, his eyes covered in shadows and a line of blood teared down the man's head, but he smiled brightly all the same. Because I am here! Izuka let out a shout of energy, his hair comically blowing in absent wind. He smiled wider than ever before, Evie by his side looking upon All Might and Cinderace in the same light of passion and energy as Izuku. Izuku raised his all-might figurine into the air triumphantly and looked upon it with a smile. He's the coolest in the universe, Izuku shouted. And once I get my quirk I'll be a hero just like him. Ah ha 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 Izuku laughed like all might, Evie joining him in. Inko looked upon her little boy with a smile, but it was soon replaced with a look of nervous uncertainty. Later. Sorry kid, it's not going to happen. Izuku's bright world turned to ash right then and there. He gaped in shock, his mouth still with a smile, yet his eyes only held disbelief and despair. His all-might figurine dropped onto the floor. Evie looked upon Izuku with worry in his eyes. Inko, a comforting hand on Izuku's side, said worryingly, Oh dear, so do you think there is something wrong then? She looked to Midoriya in a worried glance. Most of the other kindergartners have already begun to show signs of their quirks already, so I figured something was off when he didn't show anything. The man in front of them, laying back lazily in his chair, was an old man, a doctor. Dr. Shiga? Izuka thought when he saw and read it on the doctor's coat pin. The old doctor was bald, his head looking like an egg to little Izuku, and had a bushy light brown mustache below his large nose, that seemingly covered his mouth. 
He wore a white doctor's lab coat, a dark gray dress shirt underneath, a black tie, dark khakis pants, a watch in his left wrist, and black dress shoes. He also had a stethoscope hanging from his neck. The most odd feature about the old man were his large, round steampunk-like glasses, the rims golden and bumpy, and the glass emerald green in color. The doctor spoke again. My records show that you are a fourth-generation quirk user. What powers do you and the boy's father have? Inko brought her up her face, cupping it. She timidly said, Nothing too special. I can float small objects towards me and my husband breathes fire. She demonstrated her quirk by using her free left hand and made and come hither gesture towards the ground. The All Might figurine floated slowly towards Mrs. Midariah till she snatched it from midair. They're useful enough, I suppose. The old doctor wrinkled his nose and Izuka almost saw the old man sneer, but not in disgust but rather in amusement. Izuka should have already manifested one of these quirks or a combination of both, but after viewing his x-rays I don't think he is going to. The old man turned and gestured towards the whiteboard to his side, above his computer desk. There was an x-ray chart of a tiny human foot. He continued, You see, when these superpowers first started appearing, there were a number of research studies conducted. Some involving studying people's DNA for possible blending of human and Pokemon DNA and other factors. Doctors soon discovered a link between the bones in a person's foot and the likelihood of developing a quirk. People with quirks have only one joint in their pinky toes. Their bodies have, in a sense, evolved into a more streamlike version of the human form. The doctor tapped Izuka's x-rayed foot and said, As you can see here, Izuka only has two joints in his pinky, like roughly 20% of the population these days. Based on the research we have, it's safe to say that your son isn't going to develop a quirk. As the doctor talked, Inko looked on her son with worry and sadness. Evie shifted his glances from worry and concern for Izuku in hatred and fury towards the doctor. Izuku, meanwhile, still held his smile, but his wide, shadowed eyes shone with tears and utter despair. He kept the look the whole way home. Later that night, rain poured outside and the street lights glowed yellow. Izuku sat on the chair, re-watching the disaster footage. Inko and Evie looked upon Izuku, his body hidden by the chair, the room darkened with the only light coming from the computer. Their eyes were the same, concerned and sad. Izuka had said nothing on the way home, he said nothing as he entered the house, he said nothing as he gestured his mom to the computer to play the video. He hasn't said anything yet. As All Might said his famous words, Izuka finally spoke, untold sadness leaking out. See that, mom? Evie? He pointed to All Might's smiling face. There's always a smile on his face. No matter how bad things get. Even when things seem impossible, he never gives up. He turned the chair to face the two. Evie and Inko would forever be scarred and haunted by the smiling, tear and despair-filled eyes. Inko's tears started to fall, whimpering. He looked to her with pleading, tearful, sorrowful eyes, his finger pointed shakily at All Might, and smile on both their faces. He asked his voice broken and pleading. Do you think I can be a hero too? The world seemed to freeze. Inko took two shaking steps before rushing towards Izuku and wrapping him in a tight embrace, her eyes closed, crying, her cheeks rubbing his own. I'm sorry, Izuku, she said whimpering. I wish things were different. The tears fell from Izuku's eyes, flowing past his diamond freckles, his smiling face looking broken, his smile on the verge of collapsing. Mom, that's not what I needed you to say. Couldn't you see? My world was crumbling. There was only one thing I needed to hear. Izuka looked down towards Evie. The Pokemon looked at him with tears in his eyes, his mouth whimpering but held its smile. Evie, Evie said, his head nodding up. Izuka couldn't understand what Evie said, but somehow, he knew what he meant. A tiny flicker lit up his eyes, and hope brimmed once again in his heart. As always, his faithful companion believed in him, no matter what. There was just one person left that Izuka needed to hear him to say. Present day. On the rooftop of a fandom building, in Musutifa's city, All Might stood frozen, his gaze turned back to the source of his frozen state. Not by some quirk, by rather the question the boy asked. Is it possible to become a hero, even if I don't have a quirk? Can I ever hope to be someone like you? Can I be a hero, too? They rang through All Might's head on repeat all thoughts he had before suddenly vanished. Without a quirk? 
All Might said. He looked at the boy, young and thin, a middle school uniform so he shouldn't be older than fourteen or fifteen, and had a mop of messy dark emerald hair. He stood there timid, eyes closed and blushing in embarrassment, but despite his timid look his question was voiced with an air of conviction that forced him to listen. He looked so similar, acted so similar, so much like high. A flare of pain knocked All Might out of his thoughts. Oh no! All Might thought in panic as he crouched and held his body in pain. Smoke hissed and leaked out of All Might's body, covering him. My limit's done. No. Not now, damn it. Not here. Unbeknownst to the boy, Izuku opened his eyes to ground below him. He spoke. People think I don't have a chance. That since I don't have a quirk that I'm useless, a weakling. That even though I don't want to evolve Eevee because he doesn't want to, that I'm an idiot. My classmates make fun of me, some even dash. Izuka cut himself from that final statement. For all his faults, Izuka still didn't want to rat out Katsuki Bakugu. He didn't want to ruin his life if All Might believed him. He wouldn't be like him. He continued, But I want to prove them wrong. I want to show them that you don't need a quirk to be a heroic, to be a hero. Ever since I was little, I always thought that being a hero is that greatest thing a person can do. Evie and Pikachu looked at their companion and smiled proudly. They turned towards All Might, their smiling faces switching to one of pure shock, Izuka is still unaware. To save others despite all the dangers, despite the fear, and save them with a smile on my face. To bring them peace, for people to look at me as a shining hero that everyone in the world looks up to. Izuka looked up towards All Might and said, Just like you. He froze in shock as well. A few seconds of silence filled the air, before Izuka screamed in abject shock and horror. Aya! Where the godly physique of All Might stood was the complete opposite. The man before him wore the same clothes but wasn't like the All Might that stood there a second ago. His gelled back hair became a messy bushel of blonde hair. His two outward tufts of hair fell down the sides of his face. His chiseled face became hollow. His shadowed eyes sunk to reveal his sky-blue eyes, and his shining, wide smile was replaced with a toothy frown. His once tall, imposing, godly figure shrunk, his back arched downward, his muscles gone and left but skin and bones in its place. The man that was once All Might was like a human skeleton, with his clothes now baggy and few inches too big for the skinny man. W.W. What J just happened? Izuku questioned loudly. W. Where did All Might go? Izuku whirled his head wildly to the sides, trying to see if he could spot the manly symbol of peace flying away. He turned to the skinny man and asked, Who are you? What did you do with All Might? The accused skinny man sighed in frustrated acceptance of the situation. He looked to the kid and said, I didn't do anything to All Might, kid. I am All Might. Izuka screamed again. Izuka began to mumble, something about All Might not being a skinny, thin man with a frown, how All Might was supposed to be a fearless, powerful hero with a smile on his face. That he couldn't possibly look like this. The now revealed All Might gained a comical sweat drop feeling slightly offended with the unintentional diss of his true form. Before All Might could snap the kid out of his mumbling state, one of his Pokemon beat him to the punch. Pikachu unleashed a small thunderbolt that zapped the kid. Izuka fell to the floor, twitching and groaning, his clothes slightly smoking from the bolt of electricity. All Might was startled at the Pokemon's action but was secretly thankful to the yellow rat Pokemon for knocking the kid out of his mumbling state. All Might said, Hey kid, you okay? Izuka groaned and got himself back up. He responded, Yeah, I'm okay. Pikachu normally does that if I start to mumble and rant a bit. It's harmless, well mostly. Izuka gave the yellow rat a narrowed, annoyed glare, to which had the yellow rat snickering. Izuka got up fully and before he said another word, All Might interrupted with, I know what you are going to say, I could hear a little bit of what you were mumbling excessively. Izuka blushed in embarrassment. All Might continued with, I know this form of mine is shock to you, but let me explicably. Izuka shrieked once again at seeing the deflated form of All Might practically drooling and couching blood. All Might coughed and wiped the blood of his chin and said, Don't worry I'm fine, just a side effect that happens after I debuff. As I was going to say, do you know how some guys at the pool flex and puff out to make themselves look more fit? That's basically me, on a more larger scale. Izuka stammered out, Be but that impossible. Why you're supposed to be a giant of a man. 
a powerful figure that overcomes all obstacles with a fearless smile. All Might looked down and said, Trust me, there's plenty of fear behind that smile. Izuka was shocked at that statement, his words he didn't truly believe. All Might knelt and sat by the railing of the rooftop. All Might thought for a second before he sighed and decided to come clean, hoping the kid could hold the secret. All Might said, Look, I'm going to be straightforward with you kid and come clean with you about something important. So I'm counting on you to keep your mouth shut. Don't go blabbing about about it online or telling your friends. That's saying it like I have friends to blab about it to. Izuka thought bitterly, his eye twitching. All Might noticed it, along with the depressing look on the kid's face. He took note of it for later thought but he continued. He lifted his shirt to reveal the side of his chest. By the left of his chest, by where his rib cage would be, was a disgusting purple and red wound, the scar resembling an impact crater on his side, the scarred epicenter in the middle of his side and disgusting, cracked lines spreading around his body. Izuka gasped in horror at the sight. All Might said, Pretty gross, right? I got this from a big fight five years back. My respiratory system was basically destroyed and I lost my whole stomach. All the surgeries I took to get it healed basically wore me out, and it can't be fixed. Right now, I could only do hero work for about three hours a day. All Might raised his other hand and gestured to himself. He said, The rest of time, I look like this. Izuka stood there in stunned silence, so did Pikachu. E.V., however, walked towards All Might, approaching his side where the wound was. Izuka was about to call him off, before he saw what E.V. wanted to do. All Might stood still as the evolution Pokemon came closer, curious to see what it wanted to do. E.V. raised a paw and gently touched All Might's side, All Might breathing in slightly at the sensitive touch. E.V. took a breath, closed its eyes, and started to glow luminous green. A wave of relief and warmness came onto him, he felt lighter and more relaxed. After a few more seconds, the glow and the warm feeling vanished. Eevee ceased glowing and removed his paw from All Might's side. All Might flexed his arm, feeling less from his expanding his limit. He tried seeing if he could bulk up but seeing as a sudden feeling of pain was about to light up, All Might quickly ceased his attempts. From what All Might gathered, it seemed that whatever the Eevee did, it healed him of the pain but not enough to give him back some of his stamina. All Might looked to the brownford creature and smiled, saying, Thank you. Eevee, the Pokemon said chirpily. The Pokemon walked back towards Izuka before, its legs wobbled and started to fall. Izuka caught him quickly. All Might asked worryingly, What just happened? Izuka, his face calm and smiling proudly and fondly, said, It's okay, All Might, this happens a lot. Eevee is just a little worn out from using Heal Pulse on you. He should be fine quickly. Heal Pulse? All Might asked. That's quite a move for an EV to have. In fact, I thought EVs couldn't learn such a move, much less their evolutions. Izuka's mouth gaped as his idol knew about EVs and his evolution's moves. He smiled and said, Yeah, they don't. EV is special, one of a kind. Ever since I was a kid, EV somehow learned how to use Heal Pulse, despite his species not being able to learn the move. What's more interesting is that while Eevee can heal other Pokemon and not suffer any backlash, he can somehow use Heal Pulse on humans too. All Might's eyes widened in shock at the rarity of what just happened. He said, Incredible! I thought Pokemon who knew Heal Pulse couldn't use that move on humans. Many Nurse Joys tried to train their chances to push past this boundary, but still to no avail. Izuka responded with, That's the thing. While Eevee can use Heal Pulse, it isn't a complete form of it, not in the way it can be done onto other Pokemon. The most Eevee can do is send out a relaxing and warming pulse that helps against the feeling of the pain, but it doesn't in fact heal the damage or wound. And then after Eevee tries it, he becomes tired for a bit. I've been meaning to help train Eevee to get better at this so he can help me during hero work when I get hurt. All Might flinched at that, remembering about what they were doing before this pleasant interruption. Right. All Might said. Well, incredible revelations aside, I believe we were talking about my current buff state being damaged by my wound from five years ago. Izuka responded. Oh yeah, right. Was that wound from your battle against Toxic Chainsaw? The villain that tried to biologically engineer his chainsaw quirk with his poison type's DNA through illegal experimentation? All Might answered. Wow, you know your stuff, but no, it wasn't him. The bastard may have landed a few good hits on me 
but he couldn't bring me down. All might look to his clenched fist, as if he was remembering so empty. Most of the world have never heard of this fight. I did everything I could to keep it under wraps. All might sighed and looked up to the sky. I'm supposed to be the guy who is always smiling, right? All Might said. I'm the symbol of peace. People everywhere have to believe that I'm never afraid. That my smile is meant to bring hope to others despite the dangers. It was at first, but now, honestly, I smile to hide the fear inside. Izuka was silent once more in shock, his world unraveling in front of him. All Might afraid? Those were words that he thought he would never associate with the fearless symbol of peace. All Might continued with, It's just a brave face, a mask I put when the pressure's high. This job isn't easy, especially when you don't have any power of your own. Izuka's expression of shock turned to fear and unease. H. He isn't going to say what I think he is going to say, is he? Izuka thought fearfully. All Might turned to him, a serious and blunt expression on his face. What he said next caused his unraveled world to crumble. Pro heroes are always having to risk their lives always putting themselves into the kind of situations that one can't solve without power of their own, lest they put more risk on themselves and their Pokémon. Some villains just can't be beaten without power of their own, to hold their own weight, and to not be a liability to others. So no. I honestly don't believe you can become a hero without a quirk. Izuka gaped in horror and disbelief. In his inner mind, all his memories of All Might, all his dreams of being like him, the crutch that he made All Might into— that supported his dream no matter how much the weight of his dreadful reality was put onto him, were shattered. If Izuka wasn't already on the floor helping Eevee, he would have realistically fallen onto his knees in crushing despair. Izuka looked to ground, his hair and shadows covering his broken eyes. I see, was all that Izuka managed to say. All Might stood up from his position and said, Look, if you want to help people, there are other ways you could do. Izuka's eyes widened, the words familiar in his head, after all he just heard it recently from the boy who claimed he would surpass the symbol of peace before him. You could become a police officer or detective. They get crap because heroes capture most of the villains and criminals, but it's a fine profession, and it allows for you to use your Pokemon. You could also become Pokemon researcher or professor. Hell, you could become a great Pokemon doctor with that Eevee's unique skill. All might walk towards the door to the side of them. He said, I really need to get going, kid. I'll hope to see you taking this lesson to heart and find and something realistic to do. Izuka flinched at that last remark. As All Might opened the door, he stopped and spoke again. It's okay to have dreams, young man. Just make sure your dreams are obtainable. Realistic, understand? And with that, Izuka heard his steps and the door closed. All Might left. Izuka sat there, his world, his dreams in shambles. Izuka found it hard to breathe. He saw Eevee look at him with worry and concern so similar to that night ten years ago. He heard sparks of electricity and growling and saw, from the corner of his eye, that Pikachu glared at the wall with such fierce amount of hate and fury that he only ever saw it when the electric mouse Pokemon looked at Bakugo after a target practice session. Izuka wished he could be angry with All Might too, wished that he would find a justifiable reason to fight back against what people said was the truth, but he couldn't. It was his fault for putting All Might as an emotional crutch to keep his fantasies alive, used his smile as an excuse to never give up, no matter how bad things get. That was his fault. If you rely too much on a crutch, you fall easily when you are without it. If you use an excuse too much, it loses its effect, even to your own ears. And the further you deny the truth to save your dreams, when the truth is proven, the more your dreams die painfully. Izuka felt like he was suffocating by the sludge villain again felt the words he has been told throughout his life. Defeanless. Worthless. Useless. Little. Pathetic. Deku. It was enough to make a guy give up. Enough to take a dive of the roof of a building. The universe itself seemed to be screaming it to him. And wouldn't you know it, there were on a rooftop. How convenient. Before he could move, a loud explosive sound was heard. Izuka and his Pokemon looked towards the noise and saw the large plumes of smoke rising. Izuka rose quickly and said, A villain! I wonder which hero will show. As he ran towards the door, all mites rang in his head again. He stopped, and the fuel for his dreams with it. He hung his head in defeat, and walked slowly, 
his eyes opening to reveal no trace of the once bright energy they held, but were now hollow and empty. No meaning left inside. Izuka continued to walk, ignoring the cries of Evie and Pikachu as they walked down the stairs and down onto the streets, all thoughts about what he was going to do vanishing, at least not until he could get home and sneak away. Izuka walked down the streets of Musudafa City, his mind hearing nothing but the words he had been told, now with All Might's rejection added in on a pedestal. A pedestal on the give up on your dreams, you worthless idiot room in his mind. He looked through the notes he made on his notebook, now charred and nearly useless thanks to Kakin. As he flipped the page towards where All Might's signature was, his words rang aloud more. Even All Might said it. A hero need a quirk, Izuka said bitterly. He sniffed and wiped his eyes of the tears. Don't cry, damn it. Deep down you knew this. All along. You have just been avoiding reality. That's why you were trying desperately to prove their words wrong. He walked through the streets of the city, not paying attention to any incoming cars, if there were any. Izuku found it funny how no cars had come to hit him after his last defense and inspiration said no, like the universe was teasing him cruelly. Pikachu and Eevee walked beside him, their faces full of worry, but the two knew that Izuka wouldn't listen to what they would say, or even fully understand what they were saying. It was times like theses where the two Pokemon wished Izuka actually did have a quirk, a quirk that could let him speak to them fully. Izuka found himself in Tatooine's shopping district, and where, with a loud explosion, Izuka took notice of a large number of people. His stupor stopped, the voices momentarily stopping, as he saw the smoke and fire. Izuka realized that he walked towards the source of the explosion. That's strange, Izuka said aloud. Is the battle from earlier still going on? I would have thought the heroes would have taken care of it already. Izuka looked upon the scene with inner bitterness. Why am I here? Izuka thought. Did I subconsciously walk this way to check it out? As if I wanted to find proof against even All Might's rejection? Or maybe I just wanted to see more of what I could never be. As if I didn't need the number one hero and symbol of peace to flat out tell me? As Izuku walked towards the crowd, trying to look through the large crowd blocking his view of the action. As he managed to find a view to see, Izuku gasped in shock and horror at what he saw. The area was covered in fire and rubble, massive flames all around like a disaster movie. There Izuku saw local heroes like Death Arms, The Punching Hero, Backlash, Kamui Woods, Empty Lady and other more minor heroes facing off against a mass of purple and dark green sludge at the epicenter of the destruction. It was the sludge villain. It's him. The guy that attacked me earlier. Izuka thought. Izuka saw how Death Arms tried to punch the villain and reach something inside of him, but his fists either slipped through or got himself stuck and knocked away. His hitmonchin tried as well, but was left with the same results. He saw Kamui Woods and a similarly dressed septile jumping around and rescuing injured civilians to the rooftops, away from the destruction. Izuka thought that Backlash could help, to use his water cork to douse the villain and destabilize his form, but he and his water Pokemon were busy putting out the fires all over. Izuka peered through the smoke and could see Empty Lady's large visible form, but couldn't squeeze through the narrow space and her extra large and size-altering Gurgis was at a severe disadvantage with the copious amounts of fire and the perhaps poisonous properties of the sludge villain's quirk. Izuka further thought, but this can't be right. He can't be here. All Might captured him. Izuka gasped and brought his hand over his mouth in horror. The bottles. Izuka's memory altered to reveal that they weren't on All Might's pants pockets. They must have fallen off when Izuka grabbed onto All Might when he was leaving. All because of he wanted an answer to his lifelong question so selfishly. So if they dropped, then that must meant that. That means, it's my fault. Izuka whispered horrified. Izuka heard the voices of the crowd, their voices full of unease and fear. Two in particular, especially the one who answered, caught his attention. Why aren't the heroes doing anything? The man asked fearfully. It looks like they met their match. The guy next to him said. Plus, the villain captured a kid. They can't fight him seriously with him as a hostage. Things are sure not doing well for him. Izuka gasped and looked once again. He caught someone? Izuka thought panically. How can they survive being suffocated like that? I thought I would die in just a few seconds. This can't be happening. Izuka grew more guilty and more horrified at what he had done. 
he heard more voices coming from the crowd. They asked if that was the same villain All Might faced. They asked where he was, why he wasn't here, why he wasn't there to save the day. And, to Izuku, it was because of him. Unbeknownst to Izuku, All Might, still in skinny form, was there, likewise hearing the ever-growing fear in the civilians' voices. Berating himself for wasting his time limit, for letting the villain escape, for causing this disaster. Especially after lecturing the kid. He looked to himself, scoffing and growing frustrated with his own hypocrisy. Izuka looked down in utter despair and shame. I'm the one to blame. He wasted his energy on me. All Might looked down in frustration and shame, clenching his wound in pain, mentally yelling to himself. I'm worthless. Izuka thought he can't power up. And none of the heroes have the right quirks to stop this monster. All Might clenched harder on his wound in pain and frustration. I'm so pathetic. It's my fault. I'm sorry. So sorry. I'm a disgrace. Someone will help out and save the day. I'm sure. I'm not a real hero. Someone, a real hero will come soon. Izuka looked to the sludge villain again and looked at the head of familiar spiky, ash blonde hair poking out of the villain. He saw the top half of his face, clearly in pain and struggling. Then he opened his eyes and revealed two crimson red eyes, eyes that were begging for help. Suddenly, everything around Izuka started to fade his eyes widening in shock and horror. He dropped his notebook, felt the wind push past his face, the feeling of bodies being pushed away. The feeling of his legs, his body, moving without even thinking. All might, the civilians, and the heroes gasped and gaped in pure shock as Azuka Midoriya ran past them all, heading straight toward the sludge villain. Death Arms shouted out, And oh you idiot! Stop! You are going to get yourself killed! Izuku didn't listen, his body giving way to his instincts, his mind, body, and soul telling him to run to him, to save him. He didn't care what Katsuki Bakugu did to him for ten years, the memories and pain being tossed to the side, the words he said to him that cut their ties nearly forgotten. All the words he heard vanished. He only knew one thing at that point. I have to save him. No matter what. The sludge villain saw Izuku run towards him, saying, Not this brat again. Katsuki opened his tired eyes, that nearly gave out then and there, and saw the boy that ran towards him. Dideku? Izuku, while he was running towards extremely potential death, looking at Katsuki's eyes and thought I don't care what you did to me. I don't care about our past. I don't care about what you are. I just know that I can't do nothing. Your toast kid! The sludge villain screamed out. It swung a large, tentacled arm towards Izuku. As it came towards him in slow motion, Izuka thought what should I do? What would a hero do? What can I do? Memories came crashing back to Izuku, his hero knowledge from his journals coming back to him. Izuka dived forwards, jumping up from the swing. As he came crashing to the ground, Izuka remembered his playtimes with Evie and performed a roll to get him back up quickly. Izuka then used the momentum to toss his backpack, full of notes, books, and papers onto the sludge villain's exposed right eye dive up to avoid an attack. Izuka recited in his head like a mantra. Combat roll to recover from ground impact quickly. He claimed that his whole body was made of fluids, but what about his solid teeth and eyes? If I can harm him or overpower, then I will blind him. The sludge villain screamed in pain as the sharp and hard pieces of paper and books hit his right eye, bringing his right arm back to clutch it and rub it. He looked at Izuka with utter hate and annoyance with his other eye. He raised his left arm high up to slam it down onto him. The villain yelled, Die! Sudden stop. Then used the momentum to dive sideways to the left to avoid the attack and leave him vulnerable to attack. Izuka thought. He did as he thought, coming to a sudden stop and diving to the left, avoiding the hand. He looked to his side and he saw what he knew would come to help. Ev! Izuka shouted. Ev jumped into the air a trail of white behind him as evidence of quick attack. Evie's tail glowed but instead of using slam, Evie used a new move, swift. Evie yelled in power and flipped vertically in the air, launching his tail forward and yellow star-shaped projectiles fired off onto the sludge villain's other eye. The sludge villain howled once more in pain and grasped his other eye. While he was writhing in pain, Izuka landed on the ground where he launched to, his feet in position to launch himself forward. 
twist my body in midair about thirty degrees right, land with the soles of my feet to absorb the impact and slide to a stop. At the final stop, place hands in front, like starting a ten-meter dash. Come to complete stop and then launch forward, as fast as I can to Katsuki. Izuka ran towards Bakugu, reaching the trapped explosive team. Izuka clawed at the sludge around Kaken's face, more revealed and exposed. The bully turned to his once childhood friend and shouted, What the hell? Why are you here, DKU? Izuka responded quickly, clawing and grabbing Katsuki's body and pulling. Izuka heard the voices but shut them out and did what he had to do. I don't know. My body started moving. But I don't care. I do know is that I couldn't watch you die and do nothing. Back among the crowd, All Might heard what Izuka said and his eyes widened. How this powerless, corkless kid rushed in and tried to save the boy, despite the dangers, despite the overwhelming odds, and how his body moved on his own, like, I have to do something. No matter the cost. Steam rose from his arms and he started to grow. Back with the villain, Izuka pulled and pulled with everything he had. Let go of him. Izuka pulled one last time, with all the strength he got, and Katsuki Bakugu flew out of the sludge villain. Once he pulled the last of Katsuki out, Izuka shouted out, Pikachu! Said Pokemon leaped into the air, electricity sparking all around him. P-I-K-C-C-C-C-C, che 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 A massive blast of thunderbolt launched towards the sludge villain, the villain screaming in pain and the massive dose electricity surged throughout his liquid body. Izuka grabbed Katsuki by the wrist and ran, dragging the exploding teen with him, Pikachu and Eevee following them. Bakugu did not like that, reason and logic escaping his mind at the realization that it was Izuka Midoriya, worthless Deku, saving him. Bakugu skid to a stop and shook his hand away from Deku's. Bakugu shrieked at Deku. Let go of me you damn worthless nerd. I was fine. You are more idiotic than I thought rushing in like an idiot there. Izuka would have trembled at Katsuki's vicious rants, but here, he found Bakugu truly unbelievable. Izuka shouted back with panic and irritation. Come on, you idiot! This is no time to prove something. Katsuki growled and shouted out, ignoring Deku and logic. I don't need Tio prove anything Tio the likes of you. Worthless DKU. Katsuki Bakugu would have possibly struck Deku in pure, egotistical rage, had it not been for the recovered sludge villain. He rushed towards them like a bullet and screamed, I have had enough of you brats. Both of you. Die. The heroes rushed forwards to save them, death arms shouting, Save the boys. That thing will kill them. As he raised his hands to strike on the frozen teens, a sudden rush of wind followed and a large burst of rubble and explosion occurred. Izuku, Katsuki, Eevee, and Pikachu were knocked to the ground, coughing and wiping their eyes of the dust and ash. When the dust cleared they saw that they were all right. They looked up to find that their savior was the two's favorite hero and idol. I really am pathetic. There in front of them, blocking a giant hand of sludge, was all might. His buff mode of hissing was steam but he was here, and protected them. All might! Izuku cried out. All might looked to Izuku, a large smile on his face, and said, I told you what it takes to make a great hero. But I see now I wasn't living up to my own ideals. In a strong tug of his arm, All Might knocked the villain back. Izuka's eyes stared in awe at All Might's power and in shock at All Might's words. All Might grabbed Izuku and Katsuki. With his left arm, Pikachu and Eevee holding onto Izuku. As he pulled his arms back, All Might shouted out, blood splattering out of his mouth, and said, Pros are always risking their lives. That's the true test of a hero. The sludge villain launched an arm at the symbol of peace yelling, Damn you all might! Detriot smash! A monstrous burst of wind was blasted out of all might's powerful punch. The gust of wind transformed into a massive tornado, blowing the sludge villain to smithereens. As the tornado dissipated, Izuku, Katsuki, the two Pokemon and everyone were left in shock at what happened. The flames from Bakugu's explosions were all put out, the sludge villain's sludge body was blown all over and All Might stood there with steam rising all over him. As the crowd and heroes gaped in shock at the this god-made man, they suddenly felt droplets of water hit their heads. It started to rain and they looked up to see the cause. The clouds swirled around them, a large circle of open air above them where the tornado was created. 
he changed the weather with a single punch. All Might stood up and as he raised his fist victory, the crowd cheered wildly. The crowd chanted his name, celebrating his victory. All the while, All Might stared at the boys and Pokemon by his feet, all of them knocked out cold. More specifically, he looked upon Izuka Midoriya. Later. Izuka POV. After that, the heroes and police gathered all the scattered pieces of the sludge villain, and he was taken into police custody. Where he belonged. All Might was swarmed by the press, taking pictures and interviewing him. As for me, I got chewed out pretty hard by the heroes, for rushing in and for my Pokemon attacking the villain. But since the sludge villain attacked first, it was viewed as self-defense, so they didn't arrest me. I also was let off the hook for my Pokemon's actions since I never gave them a direct order to attack and they responded by their own will. So I was free to go. As for Bakugu, he was praised for his courageous actions and for his bravery. I even heard some heroes wishing to take him up as a sidekick should he go pro. He, scolded and criticized for saving someone and doing their job, while Bakugu, whose explosions caused probably hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars in property damage, helped unknowingly in the endangerment of the lives of innocent bystanders, and endangered his own life by stopping and shouting at someone trying to save him. Instead of running away, is praised for his action? I thought. He, ironic. I thought sarcastically. All the while this, I tended to Evie and Pikachu who seemed all right, focusing on them mostly. I could sense Katsuki glaring at me, but at that point, I didn't care. I saved him, and he will have to deal with it. Now I'm walking down towards my home, the sun setting and masking my eyes in shadows, Evie and Pikachu walking alongside me. Despite helping to save Katsuki, I still felt empty, my eyes tired and sad. In the end, I was still saved by All Might, and I didn't fully save Bakugu. I wanted to thank and apologize to All Might but he was still surrounded by interviewers so I didn't want to interrupt them. Plus, I wasn't keen on admitting to everyone on TV that I accidentally let the sludge villain loose. I knew it would only cause trouble. I guess I could always send a message through his website. I thought. DKU! I heard a voice call from behind me. I sighed, tiredly, and looked towards an approaching and pissed off Katsuki Bakugu. Really? I thought tired and annoyed. Tried to save his life, probably a few hours ago, and he wants to beat me up now. I turned to Bakugu, panting from running, who said, Listen! I would never ask for a weakling like you to help me don't think that you can look down on me. Huh. You got that. I was fine by myself. You're just a quirkless failure who wouldn't even cut it as a rent a cop. You didn't help me. You did nothing. Don't forget it. He turned away and marched off yelling out one last time. I don't owe you anything. I stood there, a comical sweat drop on my head confused as hell. What was that all about? I asked softly. Pika Pie? EVV. Pikachu and Evie said. Pikachu scratched its head with a look of confusion, while Evie, ears tilted down and eyes closed, just sighed and spoke tiredly, like Evie just sadly accepted it. I looked to the ground, my eyes still filled with sadness. I thought insults and exaggeration aside, he is right about one thing. I didn't really save him. All Might still took down the villain. I didn't really help out all too much, but at least I tried. I turned and continued walking. Oh well, time to go back on giving up on my dreams, maybe keep myself alive for a few days until the urge comes back. I took two steps before suddenly before. I am here. I jumped up in shock as All Might appeared suddenly, striking at dramatic pose. All Might? I asked loudly. Why are you here? How did you manage to lose all those reporters? I looked around to see if he was being hunted by an army of bloodthirsty reporters. Ha 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 ha! All Might laughed in amusement. He then said, I stand for justice. Not sound bites. Because I am all in my blade. All Might suddenly debuffed and became skinny again, me screaming in alarm as All Might spat out some more blood. All Might coughed and wiped away the blood of his chin. He then said, Young man, I came here to thank you but also to discuss your question from earlier. If you hadn't told me about your life, if you hadn't run into that fight, I would have been a worthless bystander watching from the crowd. So thanks. I blushed in embarrassment and stuttered out. And no. I it was my fault that the villain was there to begin with. I got in the way of your hard work. 
Wasted your energy and your time. I looked down depressingly. I'm not done. All Might interrupted. You told me you didn't have a power. So when I saw this timid, quirkless boy tried to save a life, it inspired me to act too. My eyes widened in shock, my brain refusing to accept the words that he said. All Might, inspired by me? A nobody? I looked onto the symbol of peace as he continued. There are stories about every hero, how they became great. Most have one thing in common, their bodies moved before they had a chance to think. Almost on their own. I gasped softly in shock. My eyes began to water, my lip quivered, and I whimpered as I looked upon the ground. For some reason, I remembered my mother's words. I'm sorry, Izuku. I wish things were different. I gripped my heart, almost painfully, years of torment, both physical and mental, years of my dreams trampled and stomped on, as they came bubbling up. I sobbed, my eyes brimming with tears, I bent down, the weight of the pain in my heart too much to bear. All Might continued. And today, that's what happened to you. I fell to my knees, my eyes closed as the tears ran loose. Evie and Pikachu comforted me, their eyes brimming with tears themselves, which made me sob more. I trembled, whimpered and sobbed through gritting teeth, the emotional weight that I've carried for ten years, the pain of losing my friend, the words, the ridicule. Everything came out, as my idol praised me and was saying what I always wanted to hear. You never told me, Mom. Back then, the thing I wanted you to hear, the thing that no one but Evie and Pikachu believed, the thing I wanted you to say, the words I needed to hear. A breeze flew by, the petals flying past us, All Might looked upon me with glowing blue eyes, pure conviction and truth in his voice. Young man, you too can become a hero. I let the pain out. I let the tears flow like a raging river, let cries and wails free. My wish came true. I have told him who I am, what I am, and despite all of it, still told me yes. I was told yes. By my greatest hero. By the hero I looked up to. To the hero who just saved my life. Dreams can become reality. Oh. By the way, I forgot to mention that this is the story of how I became the world's greatest hero. Chapter 3 the road to be the best. Third POV. Izuka Midoriya was on his hands and knees, crying his heart and pain out as his wish becomes true. Before him, in his deflated and weakened state, was the number one hero and symbol of peace, All Might, and he said the words that Izuka always wished to hear. Young man, you too can become a hero! Izuka could barely believe the words, thinking in disbelief that this was unreal, a dream. The comforting touch of Evie and Pikachu were all the proof he needed to dispel thoughts and fully believe. Izuka cried and shook even more. Then All Might said to him, I deem you worthy of my power. My quirk is yours to inherit. The tears and shaking stopped and Izuka looked up to his idol, trying to comprehend the words spoken to him. Huh! Was all Izuka was able to say, his face one of pure confusion and disbelief. All Might looked upon the boy and raised his head in a thunderous laugh. He said, Ha ha, oh, you should see your face right now. Don't worry. I'm not going to force this on you or anything. That wouldn't be quite heroic of me, would it? All Might stepped closer to him and raised a finger to the sky. Listen well, young man. This is your choice. All Might yelled out. He then then shot his finger out to him and shouted again, blood comically shooting out of his mouth. Do you want to accept my awesome power or not? Izuka couldn't comprehend what was going on, his brain practically short-circuiting at the words said to him. What is this? Izuka thought bewildered. What's going on? Izuka at first though it was all a joke when All Might laughed at him, but the words that followed and his question just made him more confused. Izuka looked to Evie and Pikachu, who too were stumped. Izuka said, W what do you mean? What are you saying All Might? What do you mean by inherit your quirk? All Might coughed and wiped the blood from his mouth. He said, Let me explain. There are a few things you should know about me and my quirk. Everybody thinks that my quirk is super strength or some kind of invulnerability, or even both. When reporters or talk shows ask me, I always make a joke, dodge and forget the question. And that's because the world needs to believe that their symbol of peace is a natural-born hero, like any other. But I'm not. Izuka stared at All Might in shock and wonder. All Might raised his hands above him and proclaimed, 
I wasn't born with this power. It's a sacred torch that has been passed on to me. And you are next, kid. I can give you my powers. Izuku laid there silent before shrieking out in shock. No way. T, that's not possible. T, this is going a little too fast to comprehend. The idea of passing along a quirk in of itself sounds crazy. Ye haven't ever heard anything like it. Thevery thought about passing over Simeon Spowers and Hardoff. Star. Mumble asterisk. All Might and the two Pokemon stared at Izuku, lost in his own mind, mumbling incoherently about how impossible it was or how world-changing it is. Bikacha facebombed while Eevee stood there inside, a comic sweat drop on his head. All Might stood there and sighed at the boy's never-ending stream of work vomit. He said, Ah, uh, sounds like you are overthinking this whole inheriting thing. Wishing to put a stop to it and bring the boy back to reality, All Might shouted out, Stop nerding things out! Izuku snapped out of his mumble phase and knelt straight, not wishing to get yelled at by his idol anymore. All Might sighed and said, Look, you are just going to have to adjust to this new reality. Plain and simple. I can transfer my powers to you. And that is just one facet of my secret abilities. All Might held out his hand as it glowed in a rainbow light. The true name of my power is one for all. One for all. Izuka repeated out. Yes. All Might said. One person improves the power and then hands it off to another person, and it continues to grow as it's passed along. It is the cultivated power and life energy of those before me that allows me to save those in need of a hero. That is the truth behind my power. Izuka stared at All Might in disbelief. This world-shaking truth. This power. Why would he tell me? Why would he choose to give it to me? Izuka thought. He voiced his thoughts and All Might replied. I was on a long hunt for a worthy successor, to pass one for all to another and have them take my place. He looked to Izuka with full conviction and said, And then I met you, and saw how you jumped into action while the rest of us stood by and did nothing. You may be a corkless vamp, but you chose to save that kid, in spite of dangers, in spite of holding no power of your own, in spite of the fear in your eyes, and your Pokemon followed you with no hesitation and followed in your bravery. You acted like a true hero. Izuku gaped in shock, the words echoing in his mind like a mantra. His eyes glazed as the tears came back with force. Izuka grabbed and hugged Pikachu and Eevee holding them tight as they looked upon him with the same conviction and passion that All Might had, their eyes telling him that all that his idol said was true and that they believed in him. As Izuka broke down, All Might chuckled and said, Geez, you gotta stop crying if you want my quirk. Come on, kid, I need an answer. Izuka thought All Might said so much to encourage me, told me what I wanted to hear. He even told me the truth of his quirk. He believes in me. Pikachu and Eevee believes in me. It's time I start to believe in myself too. And it starts here. Izuka let the two Pokemon go and stood up, looking upon All Might with eyes full of passion and strength. Okay, Izuka shouted. I'll do what I accept. All Might looked upon his new successor with pride, smiling brightly. No reluctance. No hesitation. That's exactly what I like to hear. He reached out his hand towards me and said, Welcome aboard, kid, let's get started. Izuka took his hand, shook it, and said, Yes, sir. I am Izuka Midoriya, and I will strive to be your truest successor. All Might smiled brighter and said, Very well, young Midoriya. My real name is Tashinori Yagi, but you can still call me All Might if you still want. Izuka nodded and said, Okay, All Might. They let go and Izuka stepped back and knelt towards Pikachu and Eevee. He looked to All Might and said, I would formally like to introduce you to my childhood partner Pokemon, Eevee, and my best Pokemon friend, Pikachu. The two called out their names and greetings officially to the symbol of peace. All Might nodded and said, It's good to meet you too, as well. All Might then perked up and a look of realization popped up in his face. He then looked to Midoriya and said, Oh, by the way, before we get started, I think it's best if we inform you parents of this, or rather inform them of a reason for me to train you, so that it wouldn't suspicious of an old man like myself to spend so much time with a kid. Izuka face lit up in realization too and said, Oh yeah right. We need to ask my mom about this. Izuka's look of realization then turned to fearful horror. Oh crap. Izuka cursed. Mom! She doesn't know about what happened with me and the sludge villain. 
She must be worried sick about me. All Might gained a similar look of realization and said, Oh, right. We wouldn't want your parents to get worried about you. All right, let me get changed up a bit, and I'll drive you to your home. There we can discuss this with your parents. Izuku nodded, biting back a retort about his mom being his only parent, as far as he was concerned. The four then walked down the alley, as the sun started to sink behind the buildings and night began to settle. A few hours later, after All Might changed into a more respectable-looking attire, a white dress shirt with a red tie and black dress pants, and following directions, the four stood outside the Midoriya household. Izuku started mumbling again about what to say to his mom before being shocked by Pikachu. All Might gave Pikachu a thumbs up to which the electric mouse Pokemon rubbed his head in embarrassment. All Might said, Just breathe young Midoriya. Remember what we discussed on the way. We aren't going to tell your mother about my real identity or the truth behind my quirk. We are just going to inform her about the incident with the sludge villain and tell her that I wish to train you to get into Yue, all right? Yeah, Izuka confirmed. It's just that my mom, she worries a lot. It has just been the two of us, and Evie, for as long as I can remember, so she worries a lot for my safety, especially when I was told I was quirkless. All might look to his successor, happy that he chose a successor with a kind and thoughtful heart, but also sad at hearing about him and his mother's hardships. What about your father? Surely if your mother is as kind as you told me, then he should be around more often. Izuka looked down and shook his head. No. I don't ever remember a time with my dad. The only thing about him that my mom could tell me about him was that I had his eyes and that he works overseas in America. Other than that, nothing. All Mike frowned sadly. He also noticed Evie brushing his on his legs, a look in his eyes that All Might interpreted as no more, probably trying to spare his partner's feelings. All Might nodded and said, I see. Well, enough gloomy stories. I believe we got a mother to inform. Izuka nodded and rang the doorbell. Almost in an instant, so fast even All Might barely registered it, the door opened to reveal Mrs. Inko Midoriya, shorter and more wider than her past years, who rushed and hugged Izuku in a tight, painful embrace that could give a beware a run for its money. Oh my baby! Inko Midoriya cried out, a waterfall of tears shooting out of her eyes. I saw what happened on the news. Katsuki being captured by the sludge villain, you trying to save him and All Might saving the day. Oh, I tried calling but you wouldn't pick up and I was afraid you were hurt. Please don't scare me like that again. Huh. All Might thought. He wasn't lying when he said he takes after his mother. Waterworks and everything. Izuka hugged his mom back and comforted her. It's okay, mom. I'm fine. Both me and Casey Katsuki are all right. All Might was there and he saved us. So there's no need to worry, okay? Mrs. Midoriya broke the embrace and nodded, wiping her eyes. She then noticed the man beside Izuku and said, Oh, I'm sorry I didn't notice you there. Um, Izuku, honey, who is this man? Izuku shook his head and said, Oh, um, yeah, um, we might want to take this inside. It might take a while. Izuku mentally cursed at himself for his inability to lie to his mom. All Might walked up and held out his hand and said, Hello, ma'am, my name is Tashinori Yagi. I am a representative of All Might. I was tasked by All Might to drive your son, young Midoriya, back home after the incident with the villain, and to talk to you about something important. Inko stuttered and quickly shook his hand, introduced herself, and thanked and invited him inside. As they entered the household, Inko called out, Mimey! Coming out of a room was a Mr. Mime, wearing an apron similar to Mrs. Midoriya's. Mr. Mime? It called out. Inko said, Quick, help me make some tea and treats for Izuku and our guests, and some of Evie and Pikachu's favorite poke food. The two mentioned Pokemon cried out in delight, and quickly made their way by the living room. All Might said, Oh please, don't trouble yourself on my behalf Mrs. Midoriya. I'm quite all right. Inko replied, Oh but I insist, it's the least I can do for both you and All Might, for saving and taking good care of my son. I won't take no for an answer. She looked to him with eyes that flared with such resolve. The symbol of peace was taken aback by such fiery determination and nodded. Okay, he said. Inko immediately took a 180 change and smiled happily, telling him to sit by the living room before rushing over to help Mr. Mime. All Might thought. Wow. 
Her determination, plus her caring, motherly nature, reminds me of Nana. And those powerful eyes, they were so fierce and beautiful. Toshinori shook his head, trying to dispel the thoughts, not wanting to come on to young Midoriya's mother. Still he couldn't help but ogle her caboose as he walked to the living room. Izuku noticed that interaction and stood there perplexed as to what happened, before shaking his head and heading towards the living room. After a short while, Mrs. Midoriya sat with her son on the couch while Tashinori sat in a chair, all holding a cup of warm tea. Pikachu and Evie lay close by, nibbling hungrily at their poke food, while Mr. Mime stood by the kitchen sweeping. After settling in, Mrs. Midoriya asked, So, Mr. Yagi, could you please tell me what is it that you must talk to me about? Tashinori nodded and said, Yes. Ma'am, as you know from the news, young Midoriya and his Pokemon here were involved in a recent incident with a sludge villain, to which the villain was stopped and apprehended by the pros and all might. Inko nodded and said, Yes, I was quite worried sick when it happened. From what I heard, Izuku, Evie, and Pikachu were almost killed by the villain. Please, I thank you for taking my son home safe and sound, and I wish to extend my heartfelt gratitude towards All Might for saving my son. Izuku has always admired All Might, more than anything in his life, and I'm glad that our symbol of peace was the one that saved them. Izuku blushed in embarrassment, knowing full well said hero was right in front of them. All Might smiled sheepishly and said, you're welcome, Mrs. Midoriya, and I will make sure All Might likewise is told and apologize that he himself isn't here. Unfortunately, as the number one hero, there comes a lot of paperwork. Though I can already tell what he will probably say. He would say that. It was no problem, young madam. I am overjoyed for your thanks and glad I was able to have such a doting mother be safely reunited with her son. Inko giggled blushing and said, Yeah, that sounds like him, and please I'm not that young, Mr. Yagi. Yagi smiled sheepishly. Could have fooled me. When the door opened, I didn't know if I was meeting his mother or his sister. Inko blushed and giggled more, all the while Izuku stood there in shock at the obvious flirting that even a social dunce such as him could tell. Izuku fake coughed which got All Might's attention. All Might coughed embarrassed and continued. Anyways, about the incident, the villain also took a hostage, a young boy by the name of Katsuki Bakugu. Izuki here saw that his friend was in mortal peril and tried to rescue him on his own, before All Might intervened. But before you claim that I mean Izuka to be at fault, I'm not. Far from it. In fact, me and All Might wished to praise young Midoriya for his brave actions. Before All Might came onto the scene, the heroes there were outmatched and struggling against the villain, it was likely that young Bakugu would have had fatal injury. But then your son stepped up and tried to save the boy with no hesitation and even succeeded in freeing him from the villain and made it easier for All Might to defeat said villain. In fact, your son's courageous spirit inspired All Might to save the two of them, no matter the cost. Inko gasped and looked to her son, her eyes brimming with proud tears in her eyes. She hugged her son and said, Oh, Izuku, I'm so proud of you. You saved Bakugu and earned All Might's praise. But please don't do anything so reckless again. Izuka smiled and replied, Thanks, Mom, but it wasn't just me. Evie and Pikachu helped me blind and hurt the villain enough so I could free Kabakugu. They helped save me too. But I'm sorry, Mom, but I can't do that. When I saw his eyes, eyes that were scared and needed help, I couldn't just stand by and do nothing like everyone else. I just couldn't. So if someone in front of me is danger again, Dash. Izuka lifted his eyes to look at his mother with pure determination. I won't stand by and do nothing. I will save them, just like a hero would. Because that's the hero I want to be. A hero that saves people that who can help themselves, with a smile. Inko looked at her son in shock. The words he asked when he was little flashing in her mind. Do you think I can be a hero too? Inko teared up more and looked down, shadows covering her eyes. I heard you, didn't I? Inko asked. Both Izuku and Tashinori were taken back with what she asked. She continued with, When you asked me if I thought that you could be hero, even without a quirk, I hurt you deeply when I said I was sorry. When I said no. I hurt you deeply. You were my son, my pride and joy, and when you needed me to help you, I tried to destroy your dreams. I didn't believe in you like a mother should have, like I should have. She sniffed and wiped her eyes. But you didn't quit. Even after that, you still didn't give up. You kept running toward your goal with no hesitation. You had to walk this path alone, 
with no one but Evie and Pikachu by your side, with nothing but their support and your own, and I wasn't there to help you. I'm a failure of a mother. But Izuku, you saved someone, you inspired All Might himself, and did it with no quirk of your own. I'm so sorry, Izuku, I should have supported you. I should have told you the words that you should have heard. No, the words that I knew I believed in. Inko looked up to her son with a river of tears in her eyes. Izuku, I do believe that you can be a hero, and I will support you with everything I have, and make up for me failing you. Izuku looked to his mom shocked. His shock turned to tears. He brought his hand to her shoulder and said, Mom, you don't have to apologize to me. It's true that you hurt me back then, when you didn't support me. But it doesn't matter now. I forgave you a long time ago. I knew that you just wanted to look after me. You are not a failure. You are the most important person in the world to me. You were what kept me going when everything stood against me. You, Evie, and Pikachu, you were the ones that gave my life meaning. You made me into who I am today. He looked to his mother with a whimpering smile and said, I forgave you, Mom, and I forgive you now, and I will continue to forgive you for the rest of my life. Without you, I wouldn't be here today, and I'll make it up to you by being the hero that you see that I can be. A hero that will make you proud. The two embraced, tears pouring. I love you, Izuku. With all my heart and soul, Inko said. Izuku replied, I love you too, Mom. Pikachu and Evie jumped onto the couch and hugged slash cuddled the two Midoriyas, with Mr. Mime coming up and hugging all them too. Tashinori stared at the heartwarming moment between this family. He too shed a tear and knew he made the right choice. I know I made the right choice, and I know you would think so too, Nana. This boy has such a pure heart, the heart of a true hero. One that will outshine even me. As the Midoriyas and their Pokemon broke up their hug, Izuka realized All Might was still there. He blushed embarrassed and shouted panicky. Oh, I'm so sorry, Elmar. Why, G.I.? Izuka corrected. I'm so sorry that you got caught in the middle of our whole family situation. Tashinori smiled and said, It's truly okay, young Midoriya. In fact, I'm honored and humbled to have witnessed such a moment. It has made me truly confident in what I have to offer. Inko confused asked, Oh yes, what is this offer that you mentioned? Tashinori said, as I said, your son risked his life to save the boy, despite not being a pro and did it without having a quirk as you mentioned. Not to mention that his bond with his Pokemon shows that he has a passionate, trusting heart. This kind of heroism and potential I feel would be wasted if not grown and trained to its fullest potential. Like you, I also believe that Izuku has the makings of a true hero. Mrs. Midoriya, I would formally like to offer my services to train young Midoriya to become the best hero he can be. Mrs. Midoriya was stunned. She said, Hey, are you sure? Tashinori smiled and said, Yeah, I do, 100% sure. In fact, I wish to help train him for the UA entrance exam. Mrs. Midoriya stuttered out, You um, this is all so sudden. Oh, my baby has inspired not only All Might, but also someone that works for him who wants to train my son. Oh, this is so much. I wonder what can Dofmini I will have it a pay for? Star dot mumble. Asterisk. Izuku and All Might stared at the mother with a sweat drop. Well, the Aplin never falls far from the Trevenant. All Might thought. I is that how I look like when I mumble? Izuku thought as well. Pikachu and Evie were holding themselves back from laughing, tremendously, while Mr. Mime mined out an invisible frying pan and started hitting himself with it, which made Tashinori almost crack up in laughter. Izuku snapped his mother out of her trance, to which she apologized for her mumbling. Tashinori said, that's quite all right. But have no fear, Mrs. Midoriya. This training offer I have won't interfere with Izuka's school life or your work life. I plan to have this training both physically and mentally prepare your son for the exam, with benefits that will also improve upon his overall health, like a sleep and food schedule. I also wish to say that you do not have to worry about having to pay me back. This training will be free of charge and I will personally provide any funds for any extra groceries or workout equipment that you might need. Inko replied, You can't. This is too much. Tashinori said, No, it isn't. To see your son become the hero he can be and to help him fulfill his dream on becoming a pro, I will gladly do this. Izuka said, Mom, I already accepted this offer before when he met up with me after the incident. He told me that both he and All Might thought that I could be a hero, that I had what it took to be a great one. 
All my life, I dreamed for an opportunity like this, to have a shot into getting into UA, All Might School. I couldn't say no, but I wanted you to know about this and to ask for your blessing. As much as I want to become a hero and train right away, I knew I couldn't do it without your support. So please, Mom, please accept. Please let me train with Mr. Yagi. Inko looked at her son and smiled proudly, same with All Might. She then said, Thank you, Izuku, for taking my feelings into consideration, and I'm proud of you for finding your calling in life and working to make that a reality by your own strength. But I have one condition before I agree, Dash. She looked to All Might and said, Mr. Yagi, my condition is that you take care of my son to protect him. Lead him down this road and help him become a hero, but please assure me that my baby boy is safe. Tashinori stood up and bowed. I promise you, Mrs. Midoriya, I will do as you ask. I promise to lead Midoriya down the this path and keep him safe to the best of my abilities. Mrs. Midoriya smiled and said, Then I have no reason to disagree. You may train Izuku. Izuku smiled brightly. Evie and Pikachu cheered and jumped onto the two Midoriyas again. All Might smiled and looked to Izuka's eyes, who looked back to him. All Might smiled and had fire in his eyes that asked him, Are you ready? Izuka smiled back and gave his own challenging stare. Yes, Izuka thought. Bring it on. Two days later, Izuka started to regret his internally agreement. After they got the go-ahead from his mother, All Might informed Izuka to meet him by Dagoba Municipal Beach Park at dawn's first light two days from then. Izuku did as told and when light first peeked out in the horizon that day, Izuku dressed in a plain white tee and blue sport pants. Evie woke ran with him, Pikachu following suit as the yellow rat tended to sleep outdoors. Izuku could barely hold his own excitement at the prospect of being trained by the number one pro hero and symbol of peace. That was until he was right now. Izuku, wrapped in ropes, pulled uselessly against a large fridge and staked up top of it was all might in his large and muscular buff form. Evie and Pikachu watched from the side. Well, mostly Evie, while Pikachu decided to get rummaged through the mountains of trash and junk for some cool stuff. Izuka pulled with all his strength, gritting and screamed grunting loudly. All Might called out. Hey! How you doing down there? It's comfy up on this stationary fridge. Izuka tried pulling one more time, invigorated by All Might's taunt before slipping and falling to do ground. Evie flinched at his fall, while Pikachu climbed out of the piles of trash wearing a lookador mask, pretending to pile-drive a pile of wrappers. All Might called out again. People move these all the time you know, and most don't even have super strength. Izuka called back. Yeah, but did they have a 600-pound behemoth sitting on top of one? You wake even more than a mega tyranitor. All Might comically flinched and sulkily said. Now that's just insulting. He then perked up and said, But for your information, I lost weight nowadays, so I'm down to 560 these days. In this form at least. Izuka quipped. Still more heavy than two munchlaxes. All might comically sulked again. Geez, why did I have to choose such a rude successor? The symbol of peace jokingly said. Izuka nervously chuckled, both internally freaking out, thinking All Might was serious and yet convincing himself it was just a joke. Hopefully Izuka thought. Izuka lifted himself off the ground and said, Yeah, that's great. But question, why do you have me hauling trash here again? All Might let out a hearty chuckle and said, Well, look just at your weak, little body. He started taking pictures of Izuka with his phone. Look at you. You aren't ready for my power. Izuka's self-confidence took another hit, and he started comically bawling. But I thought you said that I was worthy? Wawawagai! Izuku wailed like crying Sabo. Evie sighed at his partner's inability to take a joke. He then looked to see Pikachu posing like a wrestler, to which his response was a deadpan look. All Might climbed off the fridge, walking over to Midoriya and said, Calm down, I'm taking about your weak body. Izuku calmed down and looked to the pro hero who continued, Before we continue there is something else you should know about how my quirk works. Young Midoriya, tell me, what do you know about Aura? Izuka looked confused at the question before he tried to remember. Aura? Izuka though allowed. Aura is said to be the life force and spiritual energy that flows throughout all people and Pokemon. Many Pokemon, mostly Pokemon like Riolu and Lucario, can harness this energy for moves and other amazing feats. 
Many research studies on Aura suggest that Aura is a main component in the strong bonds between people and Pokemon, and how phenomenons like Mega Evolution can occur. All Might smiled brighter at the smart head of his successor. Right, nice information exposition, but there is something else about Aura that most tend to overlook, even forget. Izuka looked at All Might confused, while this drew the attention of Eevee and Pikachu who walked over. All Might continued with, You see I was taught this by a former teacher of mine and my predecessor, the one who possessed one for all before me. They taught how and how long ago in distant past, back in times before Pokeballs and our knowledge of the world was so little, that their humans who too possessed, noble warriors that fought to protect the peace and the lives of people and Pokemon alike. Those who know about them would describe them as the first heroes of old. They were referred to as Aura Guardians. Aura Guardians, Izuka repeated. Oh yeah, I remembered hearing about that in an old book. I read that they could use moves similar to Aura Sphere or can even sense and heal the life force of people and Pokemon. Those who believe the stories claim that it was the first emergence of quirks, but most dismiss it as myths. All Might nodded and said, Yes, and they are not wrong. Quirks are very different than what the legends describe. Quirks manifest and are linked to our bodies by our genetic code, which is why some children can develop quirks that are the same or similar to the quirks of their parents. They are also each different and unique, some quirks even completely different than their parents, and are referred to as mutation quirks. But the powers that these Aura Guardians used are different. Many a times the legends revolving them change, depending on the person or story, and many times they have similar sets of limited abilities, with no distinct relation between them. Plus, as Aura has been studied to reside in every person and Pokemon, as you said, and described as a sort of spiritual, life force, it would be incorrect to say that these Aura Guardians had quirks. More or less, this power falls similar to the description of magic a form similar to the magical powers of Pokemon. Izuka stared in awe of the knowledge that the number one hero possessed. While Izuka looked up to All Might and his heart-moving speeches, Izuka did have have enough sense to know that many would describe All Might as not known for his book smarts. All Might continued with, As time went on and as quirks nowadays are the norm, the legends of these Aura Guardians are almost all but extinct. But these stories are more real than anybody could have guessed. And my quirk, one for all, is likewise powered by Aura. Izuka stood there in pure shock. He managed him to stumble out. Be but all might, why you just said that Aura and the powers of Aura Guardians aren't quirks, right? All Might smirked wider, holding up a finger in a gotcha manner. He then said, Ah, uh, yes, I did say that the powers of the Aura Guardians mentioned were not quirks, but I never said that there couldn't be a quirk that can harness the power of Aura, similar to that of the Aura Guardians. You see, as I told you two days ago, one for all harnesses the physical abilities and life energy of its past users, and Aura is the life force and spiritual energy that resides in every human and Pokemon. So that means Dash. That one for all stores both the physical abilities and Aura of its past users and allows for you to use their power, along with your own, to be so strong and powerful, Izuka said, finishing All Might's sentence. All Might nodded and said, Correct. One for all is a literal whirlwind of the combined physical abilities and aura of all who have ever wielded it, including my own now. As such, if an unprepared body receives it, it could disastrous consequences. For instance, your arms and legs could shoot off. Izuka cried in horror at the mental image of his limbs blasting off of his body. Eevee and Pikachu too shivered at the thought, their hairs standing on ends. Izuka's mind then clicked on the purpose of his training. Oh. I see. All this trash lifting is a form of exercise to strengthen my body to prepare for your quirk, and you are my coach. I get how it fits with the physical abilities of the quirk, but what about the aura part? How is a stronger body supposed to prepare for the combined aura of one for all? Sound like aura might be more powerful than just regular physical quirks, especially since some Pokemon can use it. All Might answered. You are right in how this training will make you better suited for the quirk, but as for the aura aspect... It's actually quite easy when you don't think too hard on it. Aura basically acts like a spiritual battery for our souls. The stronger a person is, the more aura they have inside them, the more powerful a Pokemon becomes, the more aura they have that powers them, but very few can directly channel it. Take for instance, Riolu and Lucario. The Lucario uses aura with little to no effort, because they are stronger and more connected to it, whilst a regular Riolu can't. 
Plus, just like you stated about aura being theorized a key component in mega evolution, it requires both the infinity energy inside the stones and the strong bond between human and Pokemon, a strong spiritual-like bond that could be straightened more with access to aura, just like Mega Lucario. Izuku descended once again into spiraling vortex of mumbling and thinking, furiously writing down the information about aura in his hero notebook. All Might's sweat dropped, feeling foolish to not realize how the revelation would impact young Midoriya. Pikachu snapped him out by smacking the back of Izuka's head with its tail. Izuka shook off the hit and quickly apologized. All Might coughed and said, To run things down, this training will enhance and strengthen your body to be able to receive and wield one for all, but there is another reason. You see, I've read recently how this beach was quite a beauty to behold but it has gone through quite the change, hasn't it? Izuka stared at the mountains of trash all around them and said, Yeah, but since the waves wash ashore trash from the sea and it piles up, people take advantage of it and illegally throw away their trash here. Izuka noticed a family of trubbishes walking around, fending off a group of Hawaiian ratata, regional variants of ratata that must have migrated here somehow. All Might nodded and said, Yes, it's a shame that such natural beauty should be polluted, so I'm going to have you fix it. Izuka whirled to face All Might in surprise. Yee hee! All Might gave a hearty laugh and said, Yeech is right, young Midoriya. Things were different before quirks, so was the definition of what was a hero. These days heroes all about stopping villains and being flashy. Things like civil services were what mattered, people who helped the community and the lives of people and Pokemon. And as such, this training will also instill into you the ideals and actions that a hero should value. All Might reached a hand out to the fridge he was laying on and crushed it into a flat pulp in a second. Wind pressure from his act of strength blasted off the trash behind him to reveal the shining light of the dawning sun over the coast. You will clean this entire section of the beach, All Might proclaimed. That is your first test and step to becoming a hero, Izuka said. But look at all this. There's so much. That's impossible. All Might looked to Izuku and asked. Young Midoriya, you want to go to Yue, right? Tell me, why Yue out of all the other hero schools? Izuku was socked monetarily before contemplating an answer. He responded, It's because you went there, All Might. It's where legends like you, Endeavor, and Best Genist were trained. It's seen as the best of the best, the number one hero school in all of Japan, maybe even the whole world. And if I want to become the hero I want to be, a great shining hero who saves people with a smile on his face, then I have to reach for the top and become as strong as I can be. I know it's a long shot, but I'll shoot for the moon, and even if I fail, I'll find a way to continue on and land among the stars. All Might was taken back at the boy's passion before smiling brighter and said, That's the spirit, Fanbo. But I should warn you that this path will not be easy. In this society, hero ing is dangerous, especially without a quirk. It's not fair, but that's reality for ya. Yue is indeed the best of the best, and you have only ten months to prepare for the hardest hero course of them all. Luckily, Dash. All Might then pulled out a stack of paper almost out of nowhere. I've got you covered with my aim to win American Dream Plan. This workout plan canvases the amount of work you need to do every day, extra workout sessions, and a diet to follow along. Follow this to the letter, and I'll have you become for the exam and my quirk in no time. I've even managed to come up with a workout plan and diet for your Pokemon too so your bonds and strength will grow together. Izuka took the papers and as he read through them, he cringed and began sweating comically at the effort all might put into it. Even my sleep is scheduled. Izuka mumbled out in disbelief. All Might brought a hand to Izuka's shoulder, prompting the green-haired boy to look up at the symbol of peace. He asked, So, do you have what it takes? Izuka stared at him in awe. He felt a pull from the bottom of his pant legs to find Evie and Pikachu looking at him with confidence. Evie! Forward slash. P.I. Pikachu! The two Pokemon cried out in a cheer. Pikachu still wearing his found Lukador suit. Izuka smiled at the two with tearful eyes. He looked back to his new mentor, smiled confidently, and said, Yes. Lead me to be the best, like no one ever was. As the months passed, Izuka's training could only be described by him as a living hell. Every day, Izuka would follow All Might's instructions by the letter, and then some. Izuka gave the diet listing to his mother who with the help of All Might as promised was no trouble at all. At home, 
Izuku would train diligently, lifting weights and doing basic cardio exercises, like push-ups and pull-ups. Evie and Pikachu mimicked Izuku, training themselves by pushing heavy objects and practicing moves on each other, while trying not to destroy the Midoriya household. Izuku remembers fondly how Pikachu tried lifting a weight like a dumbbell, only to end up on his side, and when Evie tried slamming a large metal block with his head, only to gain a big bump on his head. Izuku would go to school, as normal as always. He would study hard, acing all his tests and assignments. He would even try to formulate a better workout regiments during and after class, the former ending after getting reprimanded by his teacher for mumbling in class. Izuku even took his workout sessions even further by using a hand grip machine under his desk and hovering above his seat. Though Izuku did notice a certain change happen in his school life. His classmates teased him less, sometimes barely paying attention to him. He also noticed Bakugu avoiding Izuku, leaving him alone rather than do his usual routine of beating the crap out of him or using his body for quirk target practice. Izuku didn't know why the explosive teen left him alone, pondering if it was his way of saying thanks for saving him from the sludge villain, or maybe just not wanted to be reminded of useless, shitty deck is saving his life. As much as Izuku hoped that it meant his ex-childhood friend changing for the better, Izuku believed the latter more. Either way, Katsuki was helping Izuku more than he realized. Now Deka can keep the old, healing bruises and burns hidden from his mother and all might, and have his body get stronger now that he can keep his food in his stomach without throwing it up from a punch to the gut. Izuku knew that he could very get even with Katsuki, of all the bullying, physical and mental torment, a suicide baiting, if he just told all might, who would probably reveal it to Yue and the authorities, probably blacklisting him from any hero course in the country. He would finally make the jerk pay for all the pain he caused him, the pain he and his Quileva inflicted on Evie when they were younger. But he didn't. He couldn't. He wouldn't become like Bakugu. He wouldn't destroy the fellow teen's future over a grudge. But more or less, Izuku wanted to prove Katsuki wrong, that he could become a hero. He wanted to best his unofficial symbol of victory, and become a better hero than even him. But he couldn't help the small, dark whisper of thought of seeing Bakuga fail and struggle, as the reality that being a hero is more than defeating villains crashes onto him like a truck filled with karma and irony. Izuku would finish up his school and homework as best as he could, so he could go clean the beach and train with all might. As he cleaned the beach and lifted and pushed all kinds of machinery and trash, Izuku used and trained different types of muscle groups with each kind of object, with rarely at times all might helping out, like when he almost broke his neck on a dumbbell. His Pokemon also trained along with him, assisting him with some of the junk, and even fighting off Pokemon that took offense of Midoriya cleaning out the beach. All Might also introduced some of his own Pokemon that he brought along to help train Eevee and Pikachu. As much as All Might was praised for his own power and strength, his Pokemon too received credit as some of the most powerful Pokemon around. Pokemon with strength on the level of a Pokemon champion, and beyond. He also had a vast array of Pokemon at his disposal what with pro heroes being able to possess more than six Pokemon at a time than the usual legal standards that were enacted after the age of heroes. They could use as much as twelve Pokemon on them at maximum, but since the process of having those Pokemon registered as active partners during hero work was so long and excruciating, most pro heroes would still use one or two Pokemon out on the field, withholding four to five more for emergency situations. For all might, he was able to have about eight different Pokemon on him each a unofficial alpha among their own species. His Pokemon included from his Braviary, Machamp, Surfetched, Halucha, Dragonite, Jolteon, Lucario, and his most popular Pokemon, Cinderace. Izuka almost went into a coma from pure excitement at seeing his Pokemon, with his Eevee following suit, as the evolution Pokemon looked to them like they were gods. All Might even revealed that One for All also comes with a neat bonus ability that allows him to be mentally in tune with his Pokemon allowing him to make mental commands and know what his Pokemon are saying in his mind and allows for their own auras to be linked to him and grow stronger over time. Izuka gushed at the thought of speaking to Eevee and Pikachu clearly. Eevee gushed over Cinderace and Jolteon, much to the Jolteon's amusement and Cinderace's smugness. Pikachu too was impressed at the power and imposing pressure the Pokemon extruded, mostly on Jolteon, a fellow electric type, and Lucario, for some reason. All Might's Pokemon helped the symbol of peace in whipping Izuku and his Pokemon into shape. Cinderace, Braviary, 
Dragonite focused the two Pokemon on speed, Pikachu especially excelling in competing against their impressive speeds. Machamp, Holucha, and Surfetch focused the two on power, helping them increase their attack stats and Lucario and Dragonite assisting in special attack. Their defense and special defense training was handled by Dragonite, Braviary, and Lucario, whilst they practiced their accuracy with Braviary 2, along with Holucha, and Jolteon, the three Pokemon helping them improve their accuracy by being constant, hard-to-hit targets. But the most memorable moment throughout these ten hellish months of training was his birthday. Then, Izuka reached the age of fifteen, effectively making him the legal age to catch more Pokemon and hold more than the standard one for adolescence. There Izuka had a normal school day as always, nobody paying any mind to him, except a glowering Bakugu who one day looked about to talk with him before scoffing and turning away. One of the best gifts Kakan ever gave me. A day without him. Izuka thought dryly. He then came to the beach as usual, where he was congratulated by All Might and his Pokemon, who gave him a poke ball with a lightning bolt stamped onto the front red part of it. Izuka remembered the day vividly. Flashback. Izuka stood before Pikachu, the sun shining over them, Eevee, All Might, and his Pokemon standing by the side watching. Izuka knelt down before the electric mouse Pokemon and said, Well, the day has come, huh? It's kinda crazy how all this time, even thought you were always wild and free, I always say you as mine, as my partner, a best friend along with Eevee. I don't care whatever person would say that you can only have one best friend, from the moment we met, the moment you saved us, all the times you played and spent time with me and Eevee, where you stood by me during the most important moments in my life, you were my best friend too. One of the best friends any boy could ask. Pikachu always was one to act cool, headstrong, confident, and a jokester of a Pokemon. But today even he couldn't help but let out some waterworks, his ears tilting downwards at the words of his once unofficial trainer. Pika Pie. Pikachu said sadly, nodding his head in acknowledgement and tears. Izuka sniffled and wiped his eyes. He continued with, So as a friend, I want to ask you, Pikachu, if you are willing to become my official Pokemon, if you are willing to give up being wild and free to be by my side for all the days and moments to come, even when the times grow dark and the lights start to fade. Would you, Pikachu, like to walk beside me, as hero and Pokemon? As best friends forever? Pikachu sniffled and wiped his own eyes before sticking his ears and crying out aloud and passionate. Pi Pikachu! Pika Pikachu! Izuka smiled brightly, knowing the answer and said, well then, welcome aboard, partner. Izuka lifted the poke ball before Pikachu, holding out for him to have the final say. Pikachu smiled a bright toothy smile, jumped, and slapped his hands onto the middle circle of the ball. In a flash of white, Pikachu was sucked into the ball, it closing shut and wiggled in his palm. VRRM. 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 Click. The shaking stop and the final sound said it all. Izuka caught Pikachu. Izuka smiled and tossed the ball into the air, it opening up and releasing another blast of white light. Pikachu materialized from the light, shaking its head in discomfort at its short time into the ball. It looked around before looking to his new owner, who smiled brightly with tears leaking out. The electric mouse jumped towards his new owner's arms and hugged him tight, Eevee running up to them and joining in. All Might and his Pokémon smiled and clapped at the sight, All Might wiping a stray tear reminiscing on how he first caught Scorbunny. As Izuka hugged the two, he opened his eyes to see Pikachu tail, wagging in front of his face, almost deliberately. There he was reminded of the hidden mark that Pikachu always kept hidden and out of his view. As it he looked at closely, the mark looked to be as black as the tip of his tail, its shape in the form of a X-cross-like wheel, with eighteen dots surrounding it in a circle. Flashback over. Afterwards, all might let Izuku off early to spend his birthday with his mother, who congratulated and doted on Izuku motherly. She even made him a cake, a vegetable cake. Izuku insisted to stick to the diet, so it was an alternative, despite feeling like he and his mom created an unholy creation, if the looks of disgust from Eevee, Pikachu, and Mr. Mime, who mime puking in an imaginary toilet, were anything to go by. The months went by as normal with nothing changing much else, especially with Pikachu. While he now sleeps with Izuku and Eevee in his room, Pikachu refused to ever go back into his Pokeball, looking terrified whenever it came into view and even shocking Izuku with a more powerful thunderbolt that left him looking comically smoky. 
so it was decided that Pikachu would stay free from his poke ball and only enter it under extreme emergencies, a promise held under the threat of an iron tail, Thunderbolt beat down. Izuku wondered how some of these magical creatures can be so cute and adorable one moment, yet so vicious and terrifying in the next. As months went by, Izuku became more focused and exceeded the amount of trash he lifted and exercises he did. Soon the consequences of these actions will come to fruition. Flashback Izuku, while carrying a large metal box, and his Pokémon ran down a path covered in fallen cherry blossom petals, All Might, in his true state, speeding along on a Segway, with Cinderace running in front of them. Soon enough though, Izuku collapsed to the ground in exhaustion, his Pokémon rushing towards him in worry. All Might stopped when he heard the commotion to find his successor crawling and twitching feebly on the ground. Hey, hey! Look alive, kid! All Might said. You've only got three months till the exam. Now's not the time to start collapsing out of nowhere and flush all our progress down the drain. As Izuka crawled and tried to get up, Tashinori realized the problem. The aim to pass American Dream Plan was created with your body in mind, fine-tuned so that so that it was as swift as possible yet manageable. Which means you haven't been sticking to it, have you? Izuka flinched. You're overworked. You're overdoing things to the point of exhaustion. That's going to have the opposite effect of what we want. Izuka crawled forward and grunted out. I have to work harder, or I won't stand a chance against the other applicants. I don't just want into Yui, remember? I want to excel. Tashinori was taken back. Izuka pushed his body up and looked at All Might with fiery determination. I want to become the greatest hero in the world. So I'll keep on training, as hard as I can, as much as I can, till I'll have what it takes. Tashinori was taken aback to the boy's overwhelming drive and conviction. Got to hand it to the kid, he's given a lot of thought about the future. Has sorta like me, I suppose. He buffed up and picked the weakened Izuku off the ground and proclaimed. That's what I like about you, young Midoriya. So tenacious. So passionate. Fear not. I understand your concerns, but now's not the time to rush progress or take it easy. Don't you worry, I can help you get back on track. Leave it to this old man to adjust your plan. Behind him, Cinderace face bombed at his partner's rhyme, making Evie and Pikachu chuckle as well. Izuka tiredly said, You're not that old, All Might. Ha 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 ha. All Might let out an amused laugh at his successor defending him from his own criticism. Flashback over. And so afterwards, All Might was true to his word and Izuka found himself back on track to gain one for all and be ready for the UA exam. Soon another month passed, and Dagoba Beach was looking more cleaner than ever, much to the surprise and delight of the community. Now, Izuka was jogging through Dagoba Beach, as the sunset shined over the coast. He jogged by a happy couple wearing expensive beach clothes, overhearing an accident about them talking about a girl, their daughter perhaps, named Momo. Izuku shook his head clear of his thoughts, not wanting to eavesdrop on a couple's talk like a creep and kept jogging. After a while, Izuku stopped for a break, catching his breath and drinking from his sports drink. Before he could continue running, he heard the laughter of a girl's voice. Izuku stopped and followed the voice, who just so happened to be just ahead of him. There he found a girl playing with her piplup by the coast, splashing water at the Pokemon. Izuku froze, his eyes widening at the very definition of beauty in front of him. She looked around his age, standing at five feet five inches, around his height, and she wore a pair of khaki short shorts that showcased her long creamy legs to her perfect, sandaled feet and her ample ass, which left Izuka blushing more. She wore an ocean blue crop top that showed a bit of skin around her waist and her impressive bust, Izuka blushing wildly and shied away from, and also wore an open white beach dress shirt. She wore a straw hat over her long, wavy, strawberry blonde hair, blue wave pattern highlights in her hair, only adding to her beauty. Her face, however, left Izuka heart pounding like a wild rillaboom. Her perfect heart-shaped face, shapely cheeks, a cute nose, smiling, bright white teeth, and her eyes, as blue and shining as the gleaming sea. Izuka was so transfixed by her beauty, that he didn't notice her in front of him until she said, Hey! Izuka snapped out of his trance, blushing like a tomato at the girl before him. She asked, Are you okay? You've been staring off into space for a while and your face is as red as a tomato. Izuka jumped back slightly at her close proximity and stuttered out. Oh, why yes I am fine. 
I just s space out and got a l little d dizzy. I was j jogging by and Ike think I just got a small h heat stroke. Izuku was somewhat glad that Evie and Pikachu were resting by the remaining junk with All Might. If they saw him right now they would tease him to no end, like the time he bumped into that invisible girl by accident and blushed in embarrassment as she apologized cutely. The girl gained a tiny look of concern and said, Oh my! Well we can't have that. You um here. I can help cool you off. The girl then directed her hand to the coast, closing her eyes and let out a deep breathe. Suddenly, a stream of water flew and flowed into the air and onto her outstretched hand, flowing between her fingers and hands. Izuka stared in awe of her quirk and stared as she directed it above his head and sprinkled on his head, cooling him off. Izuka smiled brightly with awe on his face and said, Thanks, I feel much better. Wow. That was amazing. Your quirk is awesome. The girl blushed, twiddling her fingers and looked away shyly. T thanks. It was no problem, really. Realization sprung onto her face and said, Oh. A second later, the water above splashed onto Izuka's head, no longer under her control. Serena let out a gasp of horror followed by a string of apologies. Oh, I'm so sorry. I lost my concentration and let the water go. I am so, so sorry. Izuka stuttered out. Oh no, it's okay, really. I understand. It's all right. Plus, it helped even more in cooling me off, so thank you. A few seconds passed before they calmed down. But seriously, that quirk you have is something else. Can you please tell me what it is? Izuka shouted in excitement, his inner fanboy rising to the surface. Serena blushed again and said, As sure. My quirk is called Hydro. It allows me to manipulate water molecules so that I have complete control over anything liquid or made of water, but I lose control if I'm not concentrated enough. It's not something overall special and kind of useless outside of any source of water. She gained a downtrodden look. Izuku, not noticing her sunken expression, instead shouted in awe. Are you kidding? That kind of quirk is amazing. The girl let out a gasp of shock and completely stunned look on her blushing face. That kind of quirk sounds extremely powerful and versatile. You could manipulate water to form all kinds of weapons, like shield against physically attacking villains or whips to strike and capture individuals. You could probably manipulate the water inside a person's lung in advanced, efficient form of CPR. You could become a seriously powerful force in the water but you could also use the water along a city's sewer or pipes. I wonder if you can also breathe underwater or if you can form a bubble of air around yourself to breathe down under for a long time? Star. Mumble. Asterisk. Izuka suddenly pulled out a pocket-sized notebook from seemingly out of nowhere, along with a pen, and started writing down his thoughts and analysis over her quirk. The girl, however, didn't mind the mumbling state of his, staring at him in awe and wonder. He, he likes my quirk? The girl thought. And no one has ever told that to me before, except my parents, but I thought they were just trying to make me feel better. The girl could hear the voices and jeers that she has heard all her life start playing in her head. Seriously, all you could do is control water? Heh, that's such a lame power. Ha ha. What are you going to do? Splash the villains to death? What a loser. It's such a useless quirk when there's no water. I bet you will get nowhere as a hero. You might end up failing and dying. But soon, the voices started to fade away. The jeers and cruel laughs replaced by the kind and encouraging thoughts of the boy in front of her. Her blush became harder as he smiled, a cute, dazzling smile that seemed to make the darkness in her heart fade away. Before Izuka could mumble out any more analysis over her quirk, she rushed over and hugged him, tightly. Izuka was snapped out of his mumbling, eyes widened, face heating up, and jaw dropping at the act. The girl pulled away quickly, looking away shyly as she blushed hard. T thank you? For saying those kind words. And my name is Serena, Serena Mariella. It's nice to meet you. Izuka blushed red hot before shaking his head and smiled. Nice to meet you, Serena. I'm Izuka Midoriya. It's nice to meet you, too. Serena liked his smile. It made him look charming and cute. The two stared at each other, almost like they were frozen, before Izuka was sprayed by a blast of water. Serena gasped in shock and turned to find Piplup beside her blasting Izuka with a water gun, the Pokemon laughing as she did it. Serena let out another string of apologies and scolded Piplup for her actions, 
the tiny penguin Pokemon, turning away from her in a huff. Serena sighed defeated and said, I'm sorry about Piplup. She's usually super sweet, but gets angry and feisty around anyone who gets close to me. Izuka stared in wonder at the scene before him, of a Pokemon disobeying her partner, a scenario that Izuka knew was possible, but one he never ever saw before. Pikachu may be feisty as well, and lash out at him at times, but Izuka knew those were just for laughs and pranks. Even Bakuga's Quileva, arrogant and proud as his owner, would still listen to him without fail. So did scene before him was perplexing to Izuku a bit. Izuka responded, It's okay, really. I can understand. My Pikachu can be a handful as well, but I know he means well. He can be feisty and shock me at times, but I know it's all just jokes and giggles. I know in the end, he still cares for me, and supports me on my pursuit to becoming a hero. Serena turned to Izuka fast and said, Wait, you going to become a hero? So am I. Izuka stared at her more in awe and said, Really? Serena smiled nervously and started twirling a piece of hair in circles saying, Yeah, I'm actually going to be taking an entrance exam at a hero school, but I probably won't get in. Not when my quirk isn't useful without nearby sources of water. Izuka responded with, That's not true. Your quirk is so awesome and plenty useful, even without actual water nearby. If you can control all types of water by their molecules, have you ever tried manipulating ice the water inside of plants? Or maybe you can use a support item that can store some water for you to use? Serena was shocked again before she thought things over. No, she said. No, I haven't tried, but it could work. Thank you for the advice. Are you going to apply to a hero course too? Izuka smiled brightly, clenched fist over his heart, and said, Yep, I'm going to be applying for the hero course at Yue High. Seer was shocked once again. Yue? She asked. Before she could respond anymore, they both heard a woman's voice call out. Serena! It's time to go! They both turned behind her to see a young woman, a practical carbon copy of Serena but with chocolate brown hair and wider hips, calling out and waving at her. Is that your mother? Izuka asked. Yeah, she is. Serena replied. She bowed her head and said, I'm sorry, but I've got to go. I hope we get to see each other again. This was nice, talking to someone, like friend. Izuka blushed hard, but smiled nonetheless. Of course, I can't wait to see you again, too. As a hero and as a friend. Suddenly, Serena snatched up Izuka's notebook and pen. Izuka was shocked and confused, but before he could say anything, she wrote something down and gave it back to him, with a number written down. My number, Serena said, blushing nervously. In case you ever need to talk or hang out, and to keep in touch if that's all right? Izuka blushed till he was the color of a cheery and muttered out. Why, yeah, as sure. A any time. Serena smiled and walked towards her mother, waving back at Izuku. See you later, Izuku. Hope to see you again. Izuku stuttered out. Why, yeah, you too. He started walking the other direction. His mind let out of torrent of flustered thoughts, but the most prominent being, oh my god. I actually talked to a girl, and I got her number. All the while Izuka didn't realize until later that he was walking in the wrong direction. Serena, as she walked to her mother, Piplup following behind her, she dug out an envelope tucked into back pocket. As she dug it out, she smiled and thought, yeah, I hope to see you again soon, Izuku. The envelope has a seal of Yue. Her recommendation letter. Chapter 4 Passing the Torch Third POV February 19, one week before the exams. All might arrive to the beach, the lights of the dawning sky beaming over the horizon. As he walked by, he could hear the sounds of a few Britannian wheezings, Galarian wheezing, cleansing the polluted air around the beachfront area. It was an idea that Azuka suggested to All Might, as a way to both deal with some of the remnant trash left over and better cleanse the beach from the leftover pollution that the trash left behind and also give the wheezings by the dump some more sources of food and drive away some of the rebellious trubbish that would appear. All Might smiled as he remembered how shocked and impressed he was at Izuka's suggestion. He agreed with the idea and had his Pokemon talk with the regional variant wheezings into the idea, which, from what All Might gathered, they accepted and have been helping with the leftover cleanup of the trash that Izuku had moved and deal with the more hazardous and lasting polluted air. 
All Might smiled at the intelligence that his successor showed and how he devised a way that both benefited himself, the Pokemon, and the community all together. Tashinori may have been inspired by young Midoriya and decided that he would inherit one for all by his heroic actions, bravery, and heart, but he also considered intelligence and resourcefulness as useful qualities that his potential successor should have. And young Midoriya passed with flying colors in that area too. He could only wish that night I could see it as well. During the months that he trained Midoriya, All Might got back in contact with his former sidekick, Sir Night Eye, about his decision. Suffice to say that the seer hero was very vocal about his decision. Flashback You are passing your one for all onto a corkless middle school student? Night I yelled through the phone. It's the right choice to make. All Might said as he coughed out blood. The boy wants to save people, to give people hope and peace. He's the perfect choice. He can't do that with intentions alone. Night I continued to yell. There are any number of people more qualified than a weak corkless boy. Like Mirio Togata? All Might asked back, his tone more livid at the insult to Midoriya. There were of course other applicants to become All Might's successor before Izuku Midoriya. One of these was suggested to him by the UA High School principal, Nizu, by Sir Naitai, All Might's former sidekick. The lad was known as Mirio Togata, a current second year at UA, who went by the hero name Lamillion and doing his work study under Naitai. The boy was suggested to him for his outstanding talent, skill, and because his views and attitude aligned to his standards of a successor. In pen and paper, he looked to be a younger clone of All Might. In fact, All Might was originally in Musidafu to meet with young Togata to see for himself if he would be a suitable successor. But then, the sludge villain occurred, he met Izuka Midoriya and the rest was history. Would it be so bad for you to listen to me? Night I said. If what you told me is true, the boy is reckless, impulsive, and naive. Mirio already has training, he's already better known and making a name for himself in the hero community. His quirk combined with your own would be an unstoppable force, he is close with his Pokemon, who are also exceptional, and his views and personality make him more than an adequate successor. Yet you would trade him off for some quirkless middle schooler out of pity? Enough! All Might yelled out, coughing up some more blood but didn't care as he had enough. Listen to me, Mirai, and listen well. You think that I would give away one for all, the quirk I was entrusted to by my master Shimura, out of pity? If you think so, then you truly don't know a thing about me. I chose the boy not because of sympathy towards his predicament, but because he showed me his heart, his spirit, his drive to help others that he would risk his own life, for a boy that I suspect to have been nothing but a bully to him. Contrary to what some heroes would say, such as Endeavor, Aizawa, and even Gran Torino, he wasn't a complete moron. He saw how the boy reacted to Izuku when he saved him and overheard him yelling at Izuku before he revealed himself and offered his quirk. Yet even then, Izuku tried to save him with no hesitation. He probably would have securely brought him to the heroes, if the Bakuga boy didn't blow up at Izuku. He showed adept improvisation and resourcefulness with the sludge villain. His hero notebooks show a level of analysis and intellect that rivals both you and Nizu. His tenacity and drive have exceeded my expectations time and time again. His bond with his Pokemon are incredibly strong, and he shows immense amount of compassion and charity towards people and Pokemon alike. He showed the makings of a true hero. And did you forget that I was corkless too? Did you forget that I went from a corkless middle schooler to the symbol of peace? Night I was silent on the phone. Whether he was shocked or silently fuming, Tashinori didn't care. I will leave you with this last reminder, Night Eye. You are not responsible over M.Y. Quirk. You don't have any say over who I give M.Y. Quirk to. Gran Torino had no say when my master gave it to me, and you have no say in it either. I agree that young Togata is qualified enough. I agree that there are others that are worthy, maybe even more. But young Midoriya is the one that I chose. He is who I choose to pass one for all to, just as my master Shimura did so for me, and her master did for her. So you can either accept it and move on or shut it and not let your personal bias towards young Togata cloud your judgment. Young Togata is your successor, not mine. All Might hung up the phone after that, not caring what choice the foresight user took or the greater rift that formed between them. Flashback over. All Might sighed at the memory of his talk with his former sidekick. For all his talk about looking up to him, he believed he knew who to give one for all better than the one who held it instead. 
All Might may have regretted some of his more harsher words towards his friend and former sidekick, but the man would need to accept his decision or not take part in it at all. He can only see the future, not write it. All Might was shaken from his thoughts by a loud cry. He looked up to see a sight that shook Tashinori to his core. Up on a pile of trash and rubble, as the dawning sun rose to shine upon, Izuka Midoriya stood atop, yelling his soul out. Rereaiga! The symbol of peace was stunned and thought what he saw was something straight out of a tale of the ancient Pokemon legends. The boy yelled with more ferocity than he ever saw from endeavors and bore. As he turned his gaze to the light of the sun rising over the waters, he became even more stunned. Holy crap, kid! Tashinori said in amazement. You did it! You even cleaned the area outside I told you to! Seriously, there's not one speck of trash left on this beach. And you finished it a week early! You exceeded my expectations. All Might stared stunned at the entirely spotless beach in front of him, amazed at the beauty that his successor restored. Beside him were Eevee and Pikachu, dirt smudges on their fur and panting tired from their share of the work. Though they helped Izuka with his cleanup of the beach, they mostly worked on strengthening their own bodies and moves with the trash that Midoriya moved away. Their actual contributions to cleaning up Dagoba Beach were microscopic compared to Midoriya's but what they provided for Izuku to finish quicker than expected was their loyalty, encouragement, and belief. Holy. Stinking. Super crap. All Might shouted as he buffed. Izuka fell down from his trashy perch and started falling to the clean shores of the beach he cleaned before All Might rushed in and caught him. All Might looked to the boy with a proud smile. Excellent work. Izuka smiled tiredly at his mentor. I finished it. All of it. All Might. Do you think I'm ready now? Yeah, kid, you are more than ready. All Might said with pride as he slowly settled Midoriya on the ground. I knew you had it in you, but this is truly beyond. Ha! Huh. Way to go beyond, young Midoriya. All Might watched as Izuku panted, tired from his final work, before pulling out his phone and showing it to Izuku. Look at this. Izuku looked at the phone to see a picture of himself, skinny and crying. Um... Let's you crying ten months ago. All Might shut of the phone and looked at his successor now. But look at you now, how far you've come. Such improvement. Izuka now stood before All Might with a figure of an Adonis. His once skinny arms had become muscled and strong. His thin chest now muscled and held a well-defined six-pack. Midoriya even grew a tiny bit, about a slight inch and a half, and though his legs were covered, All Might could make out his legs more defined and stronger. Midoriya's form wasn't overly muscular like All Might's or Endeavor's, but it was refined, each muscle grown and defined perfectly to its purpose, his muscular form was leaner, like a swimmer or runner. There's still a long road ahead for you to inherit my full power, but you are well on your way, young Midoriya. All Might finished. Izuku was stunned for a second before smiling shakily. He looked down at his hand that said, All Might. Do I, do I really deserve this? All Might was taken aback for a moment before Midoriya continued. You've spent so much time and energy helping me, pushing me to do my best. How did I get so lucky? How did I become so lucky to be your chosen successor? Tears fell from Midoriya's eyes, not tears of sadness, but rather tears of pure joy and elation. All Might was again taken back at Midoriya's question. Is he really worried about that? After all these months? All Might was at first worried that it was signs of Midoriya's depression and self-degrading thoughts. But All Might quickly realized it wasn't something to worry. It was just Midoriya showing his humble nature. Now's not the time for worry. Now's the time for celebration. I was right in picking you, young Midoriya. All those who say otherwise can go to hell. All Might placed a hand on Midoriya's shoulder and said, I for one don't believe in luck. I believe that all this was due to your determination perseverance, drive, and passion. Now, Izuka Midoriya, for your reward. Yes, sir, Izuka said as he stood tall and proud. Someone told me this once, All Might said as he plucked a strand of his hair, willing his consent. There is a difference between being lucky and deserving. One an accident, the other a reward. Never get the two confused. Izuka looked to All Might in awe and reverence. All Might looked back to the boy with pride and joy. Take that to heart, my boy. This gift. You earned it. Midoriya looked at his idol in awe before stealing himself with a look of determination. 
he stood ready for All Might to pass on his quirk. To grab the future. All Might held out the hair in front of him. Eat this. Ha! Huh. Over at the Midoriya residence, Inko was waking up and preparing some breakfast for herself, knowing that Izuku would be already up and at Dagoba Beach. She smiled at how her son was so determined to become a hero, to live up to All Might and Toshi's training. All of a sudden, though, as she took a sip of her coffee, she spat out and started laughing. She didn't know why, but for some cosmic reason, she felt her motherly intuition flare and know that somehow in some way, her son was making an adorable shell-shocked face. Miles away, in Yamanashi Prefecture, an elderly man in a yellow and white costume was drinking his morning cup of coffee before he spat it out and laughed hysterically. Through a force of cosmic reasoning or pure comedic purpose, the old man couldn't help but laugh and think that the buffoon, Tashinori, just did something hilariously stupid. I don't know how, but that fool of an idiot Tashinori has just done something completely stupid yet hilarious. The old man thought. If only I could have been there to capture it on film. And own a camera. Izuka Midoriya was expecting many ways on how he would be granted one for all. He expected a simple handshake laced with All Might's power surging into him. He thought of All Might creating an orb of energy and blasting it into his chest. He even theorized that it would involve some cult-like ritual that involved body paint and chanting. What he didn't expect was being handed a piece of All Might's hair and told to eat it. Ha! Huh, was all Izuka could say. To inherit my quirk you must ingest some of my DNA, All Might said. This is the least disgusting or frankly disturbing option. Now can you please just eat it? You can't just expect me to just eat a piece of you hair just like that, Izuki yelled out. Come on. The exams are in week and we need to start training with one for all as soon as possible. Wait, hold on. Eat. 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 A few seconds of forcefully shoving a strand of All Might's hair later, Izuka gulped and nearly gagged the thing up in disgust. He looked to Pikachu and Eevee standing off to the side, looking at the whole thing, with mixed looks of disgust, amusement, laughter, and horror. That was disgusting. Trust me, it was the better than having to eat a toenail or ingest my blood. All Might said shivering in disgust. Is that how you got it? Izuka asked. I. I don't want to talk about it. Izuka nodded before examining himself, trying to find any sort of difference in his body, inside or out, but he didn't feel anything. So, what happens now? I don't feel anything extraordinary happening. We will have to wait until the hair is ingested into your system. It may take an hour or two. For now, poof. All might debuffed back into his original form, coughing up some blood. Let's just take a walk to let it digest easier. Um, no offense all might, but can we just lay down and rest? Izuka asked meekly. I'm still a little tired from earlier. Ah, uh, you're right, sorry. Here. Tashinori snagged a water bottle from his coat and gave it to Izuku, who started downing it. They sat by the sands of the beach for what felt like an hour, gazing at the morning sun and sea, before Izuka said. Hey, all might. Yes, young Midoriya? All might said. You said how one for all would allow me to communicate and even strengthen my Pokemon over time. How is that possible? Do they have to ingest my own DNA or does it involve aura? Izuka asked. To be honest, I have no idea, Tashimori said. How one for all fully works has been a mystery to its past bearers, including me. I usually chalk it down to the bonds between you and your Pokemon, connected by aura, growing more rigid and or stable. The bonds between humans and Pokemon and the powers and experiences that arise from it are still a mystery to many in this world of ours. Like Mega Evolution Z-moves or Dynamaxing? Izuka asked. Correct, Tashinori said. What makes the bonds between humans and Pokemon all the more special is the power that can be unlocked through them. Mega Evolution is the most obvious, given how you and your Pokemon need a strong bond to attempt it, otherwise the Pokemon could go berserk and wild. Like the incident in San Francisco with the crazed Mega Garchomp, Izuka said. Man, I sometimes forget what a fanboy you are, Tashinori said. But yeah, the whole incident was when a Pokemon battle went sideways after a civilian tried to use Mega Evolution with another person's Garchomp. It took both me and Mega Lucario to reel that Pokemon in. 
I remember from the videos from back then how you and Lucario would just look eye to eye and then you two would just know what the other was doing. Izuka said. Is that how it works? Communicating with your Pokemon through one for all? Boy, nothing gets by you, kid. All Might said. But as for the question, yes and no. Huh? Izuka said. Let me explain. Remember how I told you about the tales of the Aura Guardians? I told you how the Aura Guardians used the power of Aura for their powers and for communicating easily with Pokemon, even through the mind like telepathy. I told you how even though Aura isn't a quirk ability, that one for all allows us to easily access our own Aura and perform feats similar to the Aura Guardians. Being able to communicate telepathically with your Pokemon is one of those abilities. That's amazing, Izuka said in astonishment. So basically, one for all has like three quirks wrapped into one. Stockpiling physical power and aura of its past users to use, the ability to transfer your quirk to another person through DNA, and telepathy with your Pokemon. Actually, it goes even further. As I said, one for all not only strengthens your bonds with your Pokemon through aura, allowing for telepathic connection, but your Pokemon will also grow stronger through aura as well over time, just like you, Tashinori said. Wait, what do you mean over time? Izuka asked. I won't be as strong as you, All Might? Currently, no. It took years of training to get where I was in my prime, so I would assume it would be the same for you. But you can probably use one for all with as much power as one of my weaker punches currently. What I passed on to you, young Midoriya, is but a tiny flame, but like you it will grow into an inferno, one that will outshine and outgrow me, while my flame dies out. D dies out? Izuka asked frightened. I don't actually mean die out as in I will die without one for all, young Midoriya. All Might said. I just mean that, the more times and the more I use one for all, the more I won't be able to use it, until the flames of one for all die out in me and all that will remain is the growing fire in you. Oh. I see. Izuka said, looking down onto the sands and waves. Even though he reassured him, Izuka still couldn't feel easy with the thought of All Might fully without his powers. It felt like a Pikachu unable to use lightning-type attacks. Izuka knew that in accepting to be All Might's successor that All Might's time as the symbol of peace would be more limited than before. He felt guilty at the thought of himself being the reason why the symbol of peace would soon be gone, but Izuka knew that wasn't true and was selfish to think, pinning all the blame on himself. This was something that was going to happen with or without him. He just hoped the day that All Might retires would be long into the future. Eevee and Pikachu came up to them as they continued watching the waves in silence. Izuka rubbed both of their heads, and couldn't help but feel the slight shiver that went through his body as he touched their heads. He didn't notice Pikachu and Eevee's shiver as well when he did. He looked to his two partners and thought to them this is where our journey begins guys. The road to be the new symbol of peace. To become the greatest hero in the world and save people with a smile on our faces. Let's do our best guys. Yeah slash you got it boss! Izuka paused as he heard two voices that sounded nothing like anyone he knew. One sounded high-pitched but boyish, and while the other sounded lower but still high. All Might, did you hear that? Izuka asked the blonde-haired skeleton. Hear what? Tashinori said. You didn't hear those two voices? Izuka said. They didn't sound like anyone I knew. No, I just heard Evie and Pikachu say their names suddenly and... All Might said before pausing and looking at Midoriya with wide eyes who stared back wide-eyed too. They both looked down to the two confused Pokemon beside Izuka with wide-eyed suspicion. Um, Eevee, Pikachu, were those voices you two? Izuka asked. What voices? Eevee's and Pikachu's mouths moved and the voices from before sounded out. Those voices, Izuka said, eyes filled with amazement. Pikachu and Eevee did a double take and they too widened their eyes amazed. Boss, you can understand me? Pikachu said, the lower voice sounding out of him. Yeah, Izuka said. Pikachu's eyes widened, a happy smile forming on him. Eevee spoke then, his voice the high-pitched one. I, Izuku, can you hear understand me, too? Izuka smiled tearfully and said, Loud and clear, Eevee. Eevee and Pikachu jumped onto Izuku hugging him in joy. Izuka hugged them back, tears in his eyes that he can understand his two best friends in the world. Hey, Izuku? Eevee said. Yeah? Izuka said. I believe you can be a hero too, Eevee said. 
Izuku stared Agape at the evolution Pokemon, tears building up more in his eyes. Pikachu jumped in and said, Same here, boss. I believe you can be a hero too. Always had, always will. Izuku wrapped the two in a hug and wailed out tears of joy. All Might saw the whole interaction and wiped a tear from his own eye at the sight. Even though he couldn't understand what the Pokemon said, he could easily tell that it was something heartfelt. He fondly remembered how he reacted to hearing Cinderus, Scorbunny at the time, voice for the first time. He realized that if Izuku could understand them then. Congratulations, young Midoriya. All Might said as he stood up and held out a hand to Izuku. Ninth wielder of one for all. Izuka stared at him in awe before gaining a determined, serious look and accepting All Might's hand. As Izuka picked himself off the ground, he asked, So, I have a quirk now. The green-haired teen stared at his hands, tears once again rising. After so long of being told I was quirkless, that I couldn't be a hero, I now have a quirk. He stared back at All Might, eyes filled with resolve. I promise to use this quirk wisely. I promise to be worthy of this power you entrusted to me. I promise to become a great hero, just like you. One that saves people and Pokemon with a smile on my face. Very well, kid. All Might said smirking. In that case, how about you give it a whirl? All right now. Izuku asked startled. Sure. All Might said. We trained and waited this long. Plus, remember what I said. We have to start training your use of one for all as quickly as possible for the entrance exams next week. Okay. Izuka looked around and asked. So, where should I test it? I don't want to damage the beach that I just fixed. Hmm. All Might thought for a moment before looking at the water. He pointed towards the sea and said, How about there? Just punch with one for all at full strength towards the sea. Izuka nodded. If All Might's strength, or what Izuka possessed at least, was passed down to him, then a punch towards the sand or wall would end up with disastrous consequences. A punch to the sea, or at least the air in front of him towards the sea, then no serious damage would be done on the beach. Izuku stood before the shoreline, the waves brushing against his shoes. So how does this work? Izuku asked. How can I activate one for all? All Might took a step back, along with Pikachu and Eevee, and said, All right, first you got to focus and concentrate on the power coursing inside of you. Just because you molded your body into a proper vessel doesn't mean that you will be able to handle the full backlash of one for all, especially since you finished in a hurry. Without it, you could still tear your arms apart from your body. All Might buffed out once again. So concentrate. Izuku nodded and turned to the water before him. He dug his heels into the ground. Clench your butt cheeks. Izuku brought his fists up. He brought his right arm back, fist clenched tightly. He clenched his butt cheeks, concentrating. And yelled this from the depths of your heart. Izuku arms glowed with red veins of energy. Smash! Izuku struck his fist out onto the air and not a millisecond later a powerful gust of wind blasted out into the sea. Pikachu and Eevee hid themselves behind All Might and held onto him as the blast nearly sent the two flying. All Might even had to step back a bit from the wind and force. The powerful wind stopped and he looked up from his shielding arms. What he saw astounded him. In front of him, a large gap of land stood out between two parted halves of the sea, blasted back from the power of Izuka's punch. In the air, he could see several Magikarps and tentacles being unfortunately blasted into the air, wiggling in midair surprised. The water splashed back down, making a loud and hard crash as the gap of uncovered land was quickly covered back up in the water. All Might was astounded at the level of power in Midoriya's punch. While he was able to use all 100% of one for all strength when he first got the quirk, it took a few years of growing and training for him to reach the godly levels of strength from his prime and his first few punches from when he first started were weaker. But the strength that Midoriya showed from his first punch put his own first punch to shame. Even though he only just got one for all, this level of power is way stronger than when I first received it. All Might thought. Just as I thought. One for all is growing in power and has grown since my time. Though he will need lots of training and experience, young Midoriya will grow up to become more stronger than me. He'll outshine me and truly become the world's new symbol of peace. Man, some deep stuff, all might. Deep stuff. He was knocked out of his thoughts by Midoriya's loud scream of pain. Ah, ah, what would gag? 
several minutes after Midoriya first used one for all and frantic driving later. Midoriya now resting in a hospital bed at none other than the nurse's room at Yue High School. Izuka could barely register the idea at being inside Yue, so he thought about how he got here. After Izuka drew the punch, powered by one for all, he screamed in pain and clutched at his broken arm. His arm was swollen red, hanging limp by his side, the bones in his right arm all broken. Izuka gritted his teeth at the pain and held onto it, afraid that it would fall off. He barely registered Evie's and Pikachu's cries or All Might rushing to pick him up to his truck and drove. He remembered All Might frantically shouting out sorries and pleas of forgiveness for letting him injure himself without proper training first. Izuka didn't blame his idol, he wanted to test out his new power as much as All Might had, and he was too caught up in the excitement of being able to talk with Evie and Pikachu and having a quirk in the first place. He also remembered Evie using heel pulse on him to ease the pain of his broken arm and growing tired himself. Pikachu sat by and rubbed his other arm, muttering, now understandable to Izuku, about being useless at the moment. Izuku quickly shut Pikachu's mutterings by telling him that it was all right and that his very presence and comfort is more than enough. When the truck stopped, he could barely register all might picking him and the two Pokemon up and rushing towards the building in front of him. Izuka barely was able to catch a glimpse of the sign in front of the gate. Yue. They arrived at Yue High School. Izuka became a mumbling mess as he arrived at his dream school. All Might quickly rushed him into the nurse's office where he was astounded once again at the nurse who helped heal him. The youthful heroine, recovery girl. Izuka now laid at the hospital bed in the nurse's office, watching as said heroine was currently berating and smacking a debuffed All Might in the head with her cane slash giant syringe thing. Contrary to her name, the youthful heroine wasn't all that youthful anymore, not that Izuka would say that out loud in front of her. The elderly woman was small, reaching about three feet nine inches feet tall. Her gray hair was tied up in a netted bun with a syringe hairpiece keeping it in check. She had a small nose, a long mouth, and the sides of her head was covered by a pink headpiece helmet with a purple-tinted visor covering her eyes. She wore a doctor's lab coat and a dress with yellow and red-like designs with some buttons on a belt with a pink R-shaped buckle, pink boats, and held a large cane-slash-syringe hybrid, the one that she was currently smacking into All Might's skull. You large, thick-head, numb skull! Recovery girl yelled out, her voice like a berating angry grandma. The first thing that you make your new successor do with his quirk is to take it for a whirl. You are lucky that the boy's arm didn't fly off his body. We were pressed for time, Tashinori said as he attempted to block the strikes from her cane. Plus. We needed to see how strong he was and how much of one for all he could use. Yet you told him to fire a punch at 100%? Recovery girl shrieked. Your arm was bruised the first time you used it. What did you expect would happen to the boy after the quirk grew stronger inside your idiotic body? Um, all might, she knows about one for all? Izuka asked cautiously, worried that he would become recipient to her ire likewise. Yes, dearie, I know about one for all. Recovery girl said her tone shifting to that a caring grandma speaking to a child. This knucklehead and I were close back in the day and saw fit to trust me with its secret. I was even there when he needed surgery for that horrible wound of his that left the Nimrod in this sad state. She emphasized her point by poking Tashinori's side with her syringe. It's okay, young Midoriya, you can trust her with this secret. The symbol of peace said as he rubbed his side. Recovery girl may be a bit snappish, especially with me but she is a loyal friend and the best healer and doctor that I know. So, dearie, how are you feeling? Recovery girl asked as she inspected Izuka's now bandaged arm. Feeling any tingles or aches? No, I'm okay, a little tired maybe, but Evie helped deal with some of the pain with heel pulse. Izuka responded truthfully. Yes, that tiredness is an unfortunate side effect of my quirk. Recovery girl stated. I can heal you but at the cost of some of your stamina. I was a little worried that I couldn't have been able to heal you after what Toshi told me about him catching your tired falling self from that trash heap. Recovery Girl's Quirk, Heal Recovery Girl can heal a person by planting a large, somewhat comical, kiss on the injured person. It amplifies and speeds up the human body's natural healing process till an almost instantaneous recovery. The price of her quirk, however, uses a person's own energy and stamina for it to work and apparently, if the user is too weak or drained, she could very well accidentally kill the person. Still thanks, Izuka said. 
I really wouldn't want to go back home to tell my mom that broke my arm. Izuku, Pikachu, and All Might shivered at the thought of confronting a worried-slash-angry Inko Midoriya. You're welcome, dearie, Recovery Girl said. A dinging sound was heard. Oh, it seems that your Eevee is fully recovered. Recovery Girl moved towards a built-in Pokemon recovery station where a red and white Pokeball laid in one of the six circle slots. Recovery Girl tossed the Pokeball up, to which it opened and blasted out a whitish-blue light that materialized into a fully rested Eevee. Eevee jumped into Izuka's lap and rubbed against him, Izuka smiling and rubbing the Pokemon's head. When they got to to Recovery Girl, she thought it better to heal up Eevee from his tiredness after he healed Izuku, especially with possibly his worst injury in his life. Bakugu may have bullied and used his quirk on Izuka for over a decade, but the most he did towards his body was numerous amounts of burns, cuts, and some dislocated shoulders. I have always wanted to meet this special of Eevee of yours, Izuka Midoriya, Recovery Girl said. In all my years as a medical hero, I have never encountered an Eevee or any of Eevee's extensive evolutionary line able to use heal pulse, much less one that could also heal humans. Eevee has always been special, Izuka said. After I fell and dislocated my shoulder, Eevee suddenly learned heal pulse which helped with the pain but not actual recovery. It has gotten better over the years, but I tried to keep Eevee from using it repeatedly due to his stamina depletion. During his explanation, Izuku had chosen to omit the true cause of his injury, said cause being a loud, explosive asshole. In making sure to give a pointed look towards Eevee and Pikachu to not say anything, he failed to notice All Might and Recovery Girl momentarily frown at Midoriya's lie. Recovery Girl then said, Very responsible of you to prioritize your Pokemon's health, dear. I can only hope to see how well effective at healing others your Eevee can be with training. I could end up out of a job. Izuku was sent into a muttering ramble of refuting Recovery Girl's claim, stating how she is an undeniable asset to UA and the hero community. Recovery Girl calmed the boy down and, after wrapping his arm in bandages and warning him to take it easy for a while, said that he was free to go. Izuku and the two Pokemon left the office and waited outside as All Might talked with Recovery Girl. I can go easy on you this time All Might for it was the boy's first try, but just as much as that boy has to learn how to use one for all, you must also learn how to teach, Recovery Girl said. I know, Chio, All Might said. Young Midoriya's first try showed to me how much power and potential he has. Perhaps I can ask Niza to spare some time in the UA gyms and training fields? Maybe he could also give some pointers of how to better teach young Midoriya? There is always him, as well, Recovery Girl said. All Might shivered in fear at who he knew she meant. Hey, still terrified of him after all this time? Even after becoming the symbol of peace, you are still afraid of the old man? Three years of getting the crap beat out of me by him does wonders. All Might said shivering in terror. Afterwards, All Might gave Izuku the day off, telling him to take it easy with his right arm. All Might would have preferred training him as soon as possible, as much as possible, but one powerful, arm-breaking punch was probably enough for one day. As All Might laid in his desk, in his apartment near Yue, he was considering his options of what to do in regards to teaching Midoriya. He admitted that he wasn't as great of a teacher as he should have been, and after witnessing Izuka's injury over one punch, it hit a sensitive spot in his heart. Ten months of training left All Might attached to the boy, like a son he never had. It reminded him much of his own training and growth with his own master, Nana Shimura, the seventh user of One for All. He remembered much about their spars or when Nana let Tashinori fight on his own, letting him test himself and fly out of the coop. He now realized that during those times, while Nana wore a confident smile, there was always a tiny bit of fear in her eyes, worried that he would get hurt badly. All Might sighed, feeling now how the burden on being of a teacher and a mentor to a student so stressful and challenging. Tashinori smiled and gained a greater respect towards his mentors. Speaking of which, All Might was fiddling with his phone, thinking back and forth about calling him, his other mentor, the one who trained him, even after his master Shimura's death. Jolt! A Pokemon cried out beside him. All Might turned to see quite possibly his second most bonded Pokemon. While All Might made a point to treat, care, and value all of his Pokemon equally, some held more significant places in his heart for certain reasons. Cinderace was obviously his partner from childhood and most trusted companion. Joltian came at a close second. 
He was gifted to him by Nana Shimura, freshly hatched from its egg from Shimura's own evolution, Espion. Jolteon was similar to Hawazuka saw Pikachu, his first captured Pokemon, lightning-type based, and thanks to one for all, is more powerful than its other kind. Jolteon rubbed against his partner and owner, its spiky fur not bother Tashinori at all. All Might rubbed the creature's head and asked, You think I should call him? Jolt Jolt, Jolteon said, looking at him with a nod. All Might sighed in reluctance and said, You're right. As much as it scares me and wounds my pride, he is a better teacher and can help me with teaching young Midoriya. All Might turned on his phone and dialed the number. After a few seconds of the line ringing, the call came through. Who is this? An old man's voice spoke through the other end. H. H. Hi, Gran Torino. It's been too long. All Might said, his voice already trembling. Ah, if it isn't the world's dunderhead of a symbol of peace. It has been a while, Tashinori. I had a feeling you would call. Um, did Shio tell you about what happened, eh, sir? Is that why you knew I would call? All Might asked, worried he'd get a mouthful from his old mentor. No, I just felt through the universe that you recently did something either incredibly stupid, hilarious, or both. What's this about Chio telling me about something? Why would you think that old bat would tell me something? All Might was tempted to smack his own face at his stupidity. His fears drove him to asking that stupid question, and now he will have to explain it to his old mentor himself. After Tashinori explained to Gran Torino about the events of this morning, Gran Torino spoke up. You idiotic buffoon! The first thing you did was teach the kid to go all out with your quirk on the first try? If I wasn't so old I would jet my way over there and give you the spanking of a lifetime. Hell I would make a Malga fly over there to zap you if the old flying spark rat wasn't so lazy. Zatsa up, ga. Watch it you mutated flying Pikachu knockoff or I'll be tempted to sweat you into a lake. All Might barely held back a chuckle at hearing his old mentor getting shocked by his partner Pokemon. I am sorry for disappointing you, Master Torino, but it was just a test run of how much power young Midoriya could use and how much he could handle. Asterisk si asterisk fine, thought I still sorely tempted to fly over there and smash my foot in your face. How did the kid do? He did better than when I first used it. One full-powered punch from young Midoriya was enough to blast away a good portion of the beach, but at the cost of breaking his arm. All Might explained. And how much do you think he can handle? I'm not sure, but I feel that at this point it would probably around 4 to 5 percent. Hmm, not much, but it's better than nothing. And compared to your power, Tashinori, that can still make this new successor of yours a force to be reckoned with. If you were competent enough as a teacher, that is. That's why I called you, sir. I wish to train young Midoriya to the best of his potential with the best training I can provide. I would send him to you if the exams weren't so close by. Which is why I'm calling to ask for your wisdom. Please help me know what to do to help teach young Midoriya. Gran Torino was silent on the phone for a few seconds before he spoke. Hey, if Nana was still here, I would owe her a hundred yen. Huh? Tashinori said confused. Nana and I made a bet that you would have become a better teacher when you got your own successor. Seems she was right. Gran Torino said, fondness in his voice at the memory of his friend. But anyways, I will help you teach the kid, Tashinori. T thank you, sir. All Might said. I'm most grateful for your assistance and wisdom. You are damn right, Gran Torino said. I'll be by you the day after tomorrow. All Might froze. You you um, see can you pee please repeat that? What? You didn't think I was just gonna give you a few pointers over the phone, did ya? Gran Torino said. I'm coming to Muzutafu to help train the kid. See you soon, Tashinori. He <laughs> he. The old hero hung up, but not without chuckling darkly at hearing the mighty symbol of peace stutter and shake in terror. Said symbol of peace was currently panicking and crawling under his bed, much to Jolteon's amusement. Two days later. True to the old hero's word. Gran Torino arrived at Yue High School two days later, with Tashinori and Izuku riding towards the hero's school. The two's reactions were varied. Izuku, upon hearing that All Might's own former teacher and mentor was arriving to help him, was going fanboy ecstatic. To have the man who trained the symbol of peace now train him was a dream come true in Izuku's eyes. Plus, Izuku was overly anxious to train more after two days of no training with one for all, at least the quirk kind. 
After Izuku got healed up from his first use of one for all, All Might sent him home to relax and take it easy for his arm to recover. Izuku at first protested, wanting to keep going, but after All Might insisted Izuku was forced to obey. The rest of that day involved Izuku getting pestered by his mother, eating, some more relaxed training, and long talks with Evie and Pikachu. The following day, All Might had Izuku do some physical workouts to prepare his body more for both his body to take in one for all and to be the best shape possible for Gran Torino's arrival. Izuku worked himself over to the bone, wanting to excel as always, while also testing out new moves and strategies with Pikachu and Eevee. As much heroes and quirks have become the norm, Pokemon battles were still a major part of society, especially for the quirkless. But nowadays, just like quirks, people respected and looked to those with strong and powerful Pokemon most, while looking down on those with weak and less recognized Pokemon, something that the kids at Aldera thought when they saw Izuku with Eevee. Izuku and his Pokemon worked hard and now, a day later, he was almost jumping in his seat in anticipation at both training under All Might's teacher and at UA. All Might, however, was in the opposite mood. He practically was slump in the driver's seat with an air of dread around him. The more closer they were to UA, the more All Might sweated in fear at seeing Gran Torino again after so long. All Might was slightly glad that the old hero would have most of his attention towards Izuku, but then All Might grew even more fearful at what Gran Torino would put the boy through. They eventually reached Yui where they were met with both Recovery Girl and a certain Yui principal. Hello there! Am I a Rattata? Am I a Togedemaru or a Talking Meowth? Doesn't matter! For the only thing you should know is that I'm the principal, Niza said. Niza was a curious creature. He appeared to look like a Pokemon but not one that anyone had ever seen in his attributes, and look also made him appear more human than a Pokemon. He appeared a short man, Around two feet nine inches and a half feet tall, his white fur had a lustrous sheen and he wore a white dress shirt underneath a black, double-breasted waistcoat, a pair of orange sneakers and black dress pants, and a red tie. His head appeared like a togedemaru, but more pointed, with square-shaped ears, circular black eyes and had a long scar over his right one. He had a white tail, similar to a meowth, and pink-padded paws. Hello there, Nizu, sir. All Mike greeted him. Might I say that your fur is rather lustrous today? Kiss up. Recovery girl thought, but didn't voice it. Even though she could be snarky, she very well liked and wished to keep her job. The secret is keratine, Niza said happily. Oh, this must be your successor that I've heard so much about. Niza directed his attention to Tahi fanboying Izuku, who snapped out of his mumbling at the successor part. I am Nizu, principal of UA High School. A pleasure to meet the ninth user of one for all at last. It's a pleasure to meet you too, sir, Izuka said as he shook the principal's hand. He then did a double take and asked, Wait, you know about one for all? Why, of course, Niza said. I am a rather intelligent creature who is hard to keep secrets from, but I am sworn to secrecy so do not fret about me knowing you and all my secret. Nizu, sir, if it's all the same, can we hurry this up? All Might said. I'd rather we speak with Gran Torino before he becomes irritated with me. Well, of course we can, Niza said. Mr. Torino had a feeling that not showing up up front would make you more nervous. Seemed he was right. Anyways, let's get going. Gran Torino should be expecting us in Gym Gamma. We should also suit you up Mr. Midoriya with one of our gym uniforms. They made their way towards Gym Gamma, Izuku in the meanwhile gawking at every place of Yue they passed by and muttering up a storm. All Might and Recovery Girl sighed and tried to snap him out of it, whilst Niza chuckled and listened to Midoriya's ramblings, taking note perhaps take on Izuku for more advanced class. When they finally arrived at Gym Gamma, Izuku now clad in a blue and white Yui gym uniform, they found Gran Torino inside, lying down in a pool of red. Aya! He's dead! Izuku screamed out in horror. The old man raised his head. I'm alive! Aya! He's alive! Izuku screamed out in horror and joy. Beside him, Evie was likely freaked out and sighing in relief, while Pikachu was barely holding in his laughter. Recovery Girl and Niza were chuckling, while All Might was shivering more nervously. The previously thought to be deceased old man stood up and spoke in a senile like voice. Oh, excuse me, I seem to have slipped in a pile of sausages that I had brought with me. How clumsy of me! Gran Torino wiped his chest at upon closer look, 
appeared to be ketchup and sausage sauce. Gran Torino appeared a old, short man, around recovery girl's height, with white-gray hair and beard and elderly wrinkles all over his face. He wore a plain yellow and white hero costume, a black domino mask on his face, a long yellow cape strapped to his back, a yellow belt with a gray G in the middle, had large padded shoes, that for a quick look Izuku saw had holes on the bottom, and had a wooden cane on him. I is this for real? Izuka thought in disbelief. Is this really All Might's teacher? He looks almost senile. Don't fall for it, young Midoriya. All Might thought nervously. Don't fall for his trick. W who might you be? Gran Torino asked, pointing at Izuka with his cane. You am I Mizuka Midoriya, Izuka said. Who? Gran Torino asked, his hand over his ear. I Izuka Midoriya, Izuka said louder. Huh? The old man asked again. This guy is senile, Izuka thought again. No, he's falling for it, All Might thought more nervously. Izuka turned to All Might and asked, I is this really Gran Torino? He looks more like the human equivalent of a dramp oof. Izuka suddenly received a swift kick to the back of the head by the supposedly senile old man. Izuka looked back to see the old man now jumping all over them in the gym, speeding and jumping around the walls, floor, and ceiling as fast as a bullet that Izuka could barely keep track. It finally ended with Gran Torino landing above them, hanging by the wall above them, looking at Izuka with a challenging look and a devious smile. Want to compare me with the Drampa again? Or are you ready for me to train ya, ya newbie? Later. Few days followed after that, Izuka training under both Gran Torino and All Might, with Izuka quickly discovering why the mighty symbol of peace feared the short man. While old and short, the old man was incredibly fast and strong. Gran Torino's training was for Izuka to mainly power up one for all with a lower percentage and try to hit him. Izuka at first failed miserably, barely able to muster up one for all quick enough or string enough to strike at the fast-moving target. It was also made especially hard when Jim Gamma was changed, thanks to the cement hero, Cementas, to have large columns of cement for Gran Torino to jump around. Izuka could barely keep track of the speeding and jumping target, and he could barely think up a plan before he received kick to the back or head. Izuka picked up on what kind of quirk Gran Torino had that allowed for his fast movement. Jet was the name of Gran Torino's quirk, and it allowed him to convert his own breathe into highly pressurized air that shoot out of his feet, propelling him at high speeds. During these days, All Might told Izuka that in his current state, Izuka could only use about 4% of one for all, maybe 5. At first Izuka felt downtrodden at such a measly percentage, before All Might assured him that with as much power as he saw from Izuka with just one punch, that it was more powerful than any punch he threw in his first time and encouraged the green-haired teen to keep practicing and trying to use one for all at a lower power than full out 100%. Izuka did as he was instructed and focused one for all at only 4%. At first, he felt like it was shaking and almost about to explode before settling and gaining control. It didn't break when Izuka punched a rock to smithereens, though it did tingle. He then tried raising it to 5%, and he found it harder to control and it left his hand numb after a while but it didn't break either. Over and over, Izuka tried to call one for all and at a lower percentage at the old hero, but every attempt ended with Midoriya on his butt. Izuka asked why this was considered training after a rather humiliating session of being made a bitch by an old man, to which said old man told him. Tashinori called me after you used one for all and broke your arm. That kind of use of the quirk is disgraceful. You will be a liability if you can only use one for all at 100% and break your limbs afterwards. This training is to help you find a way to control one for all in a less destructive form and more effective method than just calling upon it. Gran Torino explained. What that may be I can't nor will tell you. You have to find a way to use one for all in your own way rather than refer to your shackled admiration to all might. Afterwards, Izuka mulled over those words and found them enlightening. Izuka indeed could see that he wasn't going to suddenly be able to use 100% of all might's punches with just training and his arms weren't going to handle constant breakage without serious consequences later down the line. Plus, despite his best attempts, his tries to use one for all were too slow and required too much concentration, and even a few rare attempts of him using it by instinct were sluggish and lacked control. Izuka recalled to when he asked All Might over how to control one for all's power. Flashback 
Izuku's training with All Might was more physical workouts, along with some basic martial arts training. With instruction by both Nizu and Gran Torino, All Might, and later Izuku, agreed that while Izuku may one day have the overwhelming speed and strength of All Might, learning a few martial arts would be a welcome addition. Izuku preferred judo techniques, most especially using an opponent's greater strength and momentum and using it against them, and quick karate-style punches and strikes for his more agile and smaller physique. This training was easy for All Might to do, his larger stature and durability in buff mode made for the perfect punching bag. After a quick session involving some judo-style flips and parries, Izuka asked All Might how he controlled one for all, how it felt for him to call on its overwhelming power. You just have to feel it, All Might replied. A blank stare from Izuka later and All Might gave him a more legitimate answer. It's actually quite simple, Midoriya. Do you remember your first punch with one for all? Broken bones and a lot of pain? Izuka questioned. No, I mean the rush of energy, feeling it course through you. What did it feel like for you? All Might asked. Izuka pondered for a minute, remembering the power course through him, the heat and pressure that exploded outwards till it burst forth and broke his arm apart. It was like... It was like an egg about to explode in a microwave. All Might laughed at that statement claiming it sounded rather lame, but encouraged Midoriya to keep to that image. All right, then lower the wattage and energy, or decrease the cooking time. And secondly, don't think about it calling out towards it. One for all, hell quirks in general, are not like magic or some special summon in a video game. It is a part of you, flowing inside you, ready to come out, but you are the one that's in command. One for all is now a part of you, not the other way around. Izuki gaped in awe at All Might's wisdom before nodding his face determined and ready to go. Flashback over. For the next few days, that's how Izuka's days went. Izuka failing to hit Gran Torino, a break, physical training with All Might, another break, and so on and so on. Now, Izuka was currently doing another training session with Gran Torino, the jet hero pinning Izuka's head against the ground. Nope, too slow. You were too busy muttering up some plan that you failed to catch me fainting. Don't let your mind wander. Stay focused on what's around you and adapt, Gran Torino said. Sorry, I'm just a little puzzled on something All Might said, Izuka said. I tried to lower the wattage like he said, and I've got more control over it and managed to focus it on one body part with lesser power, but I'm still too slow to react and power my fists up with one for all. That's good to hear, Gran Torino said. You're learning and getting used to the quirk. Now is all a matter of reaction and control. You say that you can gather it in one specific body part? Yeah, Izuka said. Why are you only using it in one fist? Gran Torino said. Izuka was about to answer before he froze, his eyes full of confusion. You know why, Gran Torino said. You are trying to imitate All Might. You are trying to punch like he does, trying to use his level of strength and power, aren't you? Izuka simple nodded. That is what I mean when I say that your admiration for All Might is a shackle, Gran Torino said. You and All Might are two different people in terms of physical nature. He is big, strong, and muscled. You are skinny, lean, and short. One style of fighting can't be fully copied by another of a different style. Izuka nodded. So why use one for all on only hand at a time? Gran Torino asked. Before Izuka could answer, Pikachu and Eevee sounded off walking over to them slowly with a plate of treats with them, and moving slowly and flinchingly. Treats are ready! Evie called out, Izuka understanding him. Eat up, boss, you need some more fuel if you want to catch this old fart, Pikachu said. He took another step and winced. Oh, sweet Arceus! My paws are killing me! Damn that old copycat of me! Oh yeah, another thing that happened. Gran Torino pretty much sent Pikachu and Eevee to their own boot camp as well, run by his own partner Pokemon, Emulga. The air-slash-lightning-type Pokemon worked Pikachu and Eevee in both speed and accuracy. Emulga would fly around at high speeds while Pikachu and Eevee would try and either tag him or fire at him with either swift or electro ball. If their bruises and tiredness was anything to go by, Emulga was just as much as a brutal teacher as his partner. Ah, uh, finally! Gran Torino said. I've been starving for some tasty, hot pastries. Gran Torino swiped one of the pastries and chomped down on it. 
he cringed in pain as it was as hard as a rock. Ow! Oh, you two idiots! No wonder Pokemon shouldn't be allowed to cook. Do you two furry knuckleheads not know that if you stick multiple pastries in one microwave that there is no room for it to grow? Izuka paused at the old man's words. His mind flashed in realization as the lessons started to piece together. You have to find a way to use one for all in your own way rather than refer to your shackled admiration to all might. Lower the wattage and energy or the cooking time. Don't think about calling out towards it. One for all is part of you, not the other way around. So why use one for all one hand at a time? I got it! Izuku screamed out, startling the two Pokemon and old hero. Got what? Gran Torino asked. The pastry. Izuka said as he grabbed a pastry and held to Gran Torino. The pastry is me. Boss, I think you might want to eat that pastry. I think you are so hungry that you are yelling nonsense, Pikachu said bluntly. No, no, not like that, Izuka said. I think I get what I'm supposed to do. Back then I used one for all in a single shot with too much power, so I lowered the power of my punches to 4-5% to like you and All Might told me. All this time I've just been calling out one for all like flipping on a switch or turning on the microwave. I've only been using it in one area at the times I've needed, but doing it makes me slower and slower. I've been turning it off and on, but I shouldn't. Izuka bent his knees down and took a stance. I should let the switch stay on, and not focus the energy in just one hand and break it, but let it heat up and grow and spread all over my body, all at once. The red veins of one for all charged up all over Izuka's body and focused on the image of the egg not exploding but heating up. I need to use one for all by not summoning it in one place, but all over me continuously, with just the 5% that I can use for now. In his mind, he could imagine a star of energy jumping from one star to the next, glowing with another color, till it finally landed in his metaphorical hands and glowed emerald green. Izuka glowed and sparked green lightning all around him. One for all full calling. As Izuku demonstrated his new technique, Gran Torino smirked. Didn't take too long for him to figure that out. Regular kids take years to figure out their quirks. And he did figure it out in only a few days. You really did pick a great one, Tashinori. Said Symbol of Peace watched from afar with Niza and Recovery Girl, the three walking in after hearing Midoriya's outburst. Niza and Recovery Girl smiled in satisfaction. All Might watched his successor power up in awe and then smiled in proud admiration. You did it, kid. Much faster than I expected. I can only imagine how long it would have to take you if I was only a bit dumber. Evie and Pikachu watched Izuku in awe and shivered. The two could feel the energy coursing through Izuku, their shared link through one for all helping sense what he was sensing. Evie smiled at seeing his lifelong friend and partner grow closer to his dream. Pikachu smiled likewise for the same reasons additionally smiling at seeing Izuka spark in green lightning, much like himself. That whole egg in a microwave thing sounds pretty boring, but it looks to suit you well, newbie, Gran Torino said. It might sound dumb and boring, but it works for me and that's all that matters, Izuka said, his teeth gritting slightly at the rush of energy. With every breath and second, Izuka felt his limbs relax, felt the energy fully taken. As it settled, Izuka smiled at the feeling of power inside him. To him it made him feel more stronger, more energetic, more alive. Think you can move in this state? Gran Torino said. Izuka breathed out and imagined the power resting at 4 to 5 percent. He tried raising it higher, but felt his body strain and groan, immediately setting it back down. I think so. Want to give it a go? Izuka smirked and opened his eyes, the lightning sparking up. Yes. Let's go. And there you have it, fellow adventurers. Another exhilarating chapter in our what-if saga. But don't you worry, our adventure is far from over. We've got plenty more twists, turns, and electrifying moments headed your way, so make sure to stay tuned for the next installment. And as always, a massive shout-out to the incredible Zayden Stormvoy for sparking this epic idea. Keep those creative juices flowing, buddy. Until next time, heroes, keep dreaming big, training hard, and remember, with Pokemon by your side and one for all in your heart, anything is possible. Catch you on the flip side, trainers. Peace out.